right, here we go. Three, two, one. Boom! And welcome to the Big Honker Podcast, brought to you by Boss Shot Shells. Proud sponsor, also, of On the Road with Boss, hosted by Andy and Jeff, which we'll be filming this summer, starting in a couple weeks. And with me today is We need my, to shoot a kite with Clay. We've talked about that earlier. Oh, you right. did? Yes, we did. We've already... Gotta make that happen. Oh, it's already yeah. happened. Okay. Well, I was yep. late. I was late yeah. to the party. Yep, you were. Yes, I was we're cooking. Gonna, we are going to when they're down here doing the helicopter hog hunt and tornado chasing, we're gonna do a varmint hunt with Clay. Okay. Are you gonna actually participate in a tornado chasing? This is gonna be the that's gonna be the, I look forward to this episode more than anything. Is Andy going tornado chasing? Um, I will. The only reason I've not gone tornado chasing with you is because the thought of sitting in a vehicle for six hours just to turn around and come home. Does not appeal but to it's me. It's an epic six hours sometimes. No, uh, Jeff, I there's how many times do you think you've tornado? How many times do you tornado chase in a year? It, on a good year. On a good year, not like, 20% not the last of the years. time you're going to see tornadoes are 35, probably 20 to 35% of the time on a really good day. And how far you'll go to Kansas and yeah, just turn sometimes. around and come home. Yep, but it's fun. Mm. It, it. I have had days His with His definition it. of fun and my <laughs> definition of fun is totally different for me. Right. Yeah, I got yeah. other shit to do. I've had days where, uh, it has not been much fun. We hadn't get on storms, but on days I get on storms the whole time. Even if I don't see a tornado and I get a bunch of bad storms, it's a really enjoyable time. Yeah, but I don't it, want to go sit in a hailstorm on, either. Though. On it, when when if if we film a show of chasing, it's going to be a day of of moderate to extreme risk <clears> day. It's a really really good chance of being a storm. So I'm going to say on a day like that, usually I'm fifty to sixty percent. Sometimes seventy five percent. I must say overall, probably sixty. 60% to 70% of the time, those days we get on tornadoes. Some days, multiple tornadoes. I think me and Chuck got onto them. One time, me and Coach got into, I think, 13 tornadoes one day. That was a fun day. Yeah. Now, that well, would be fun. But yeah. See, see, you need to take with me with you because then it would turn into a clay chasing day. <laughs> when one of them some bitches dropped out of the deal, I'm like, ah! I'm running like, yeah, well, I'm out. Have you been close out in the country? Absolutely. Have you had a tornado come close to absolutely, you? Absolutely, absolutely. And, and one time we we had a, a tornado real close. I mean, visible right there. We were horseback in the mountains of New Mexico, but the lightning was so bad that all seven of us we we could give two shits about the tornado. <laughs> the lightning was hitting so bad. We tried tied our horses up over here and we laid flat on the ground in the pouring ass rain and the hail. That's a scary deal, though. <laughs> I, I mean, in them mountains, that lightning is a different brand of. Yeah, yeah, I could give two shits about that tornado, and I'm scared to death of tornadoes. You are? Like, oh, yeah, I don't know. Really? I, I used to love, I used to be Jeff Stanfield when I, Just, before I was 12 years old. Oh, right. When I was 12 years old, we were in that uh, Wichita tornado. 70, or we, we were close 90. enough to where I watched all the devastation and all that. And uh, after that, the very next day after that tornado, because we were under house so we lived over on west winona in the hood and we, <laughs> wasn't, we wasn't in the uh you weren't very far from the nice houses though. i know it yeah my backyard over there that's, <laughs> you can yeah, see we, nice houses yeah, yeah it's real nice but that next day i was out there i dug a hole six foot deep six foot <laughs> wide building my own storm shelter because i was not crawling in underneath that house anymore with the scorpions and the, the black widows and my dogs and all that of course First time it rained, I had a six foot by six foot <laughs> pool. How far that on West Winona to Fountain Park and Fountain Park got slammed pretty hard. Yes, you see, weren't about a half a mile away from the see, tornado. A lot of people don't realize that there was another single tornado that come across there. You remember it took out uh Channel Three, part of Channel Three, and the old drive in theater over there wiped it out. Yeah, and it was all sucked into all that other stuff. We sit up there on the hill because our house was right we was right by channel six, you know, mm -hmm. right back behind there. Yeah, I mean it was <laughs> what was funny is I was going to school at Valley View. You, remember, you know where Valley View is? Yes, I do. Yeah, we we were a Valley. I was the last of the Valley View Warriors. They let us out of school early that day, and we went over to Iowa Park. And in Iowa Park, they touched. So y'all were in school still? We were on, because we, the Wichita Falls schools were on Easter break. Yeah. No, we were in school. Yeah, they let us out at 2 o'clock because they expected it to come in. And we left and went to Iowa Park, I mean, to a friend's house. And then my dad come got us, and we went over to my dad's house over at West Winona. That was, I'm telling you, that was a day. I, mean, I, I can remember that day step by step, everything about that day. Yeah. And it's just, it's it's a crazy day. But I think I really enjoyed storms, and I, and I remember them. But I'm going to tell you what, the year or two after that, motherfucker, it lightning. People in, <laughs> people in town had their attention. I'm we didn't have to worry about that. And when a tornado watch box came up after 1979, 
say 1980 to 1983, people in Wichita Falls ah, were on fucking yeah. cue, boy. Yeah, they were do, on bright. Does Archer City do this? And this is the dumbest thing that Knox City does. And I love, I love Knox City, but if it's a bad storm, they'll blow the siren for hail and high wind. Well, fuck. All you're doing is you're scaring a lot of old ladies yeah, to no, going right. out in the middle of the... They're going oh, out yeah. in the storm Call to go to the cellar. Panic. And then, two, if you do that enough, people are going to quit going to the cellar because they're going to say, well, fuck it. It's just hail and, and high winds. Wolf. And yeah. you're Boy, creating Jeff, wolf, yeah. Jeff Stanfield's phone to blow up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because it goes crazy when that happens. But I don't understand. <clears> you, have a, you have a tornado siren that we're going to blow for hail and high wind. Yeah. And now nobody's going to listen when the tornado no, is they, coming. They, they had to have visual down there or or some pretty solid rotation before they'll, right. they'll blow it. Yeah, no. Wichita Falls, same way. They didn't blow a tornado unless using a tornado warning. Yeah. And Wichita Falls was lucky because in 79, for people that don't know, we got hit by an F4 tornado about like Moore. Went right through the middle of town, killed 70 people. It was two and a half miles wide at some point. It was a big mamba jumbo, 140 to 180 mile an hour winds. It was a bad storm. <clears throat> a lot of people died, a lot, a lot of destruction. <clears throat> but Wichita Falls had been hit in 64 by a tornado hit the base in Sunset yep. Terrace. Wichita Falls was proactive then. They paid. They had a good sky-worn weather network. <clears throat> so when I started chasing storms was right after I got out of high school. I had bought me a scanner, and I could uh, dial into the sky-worn, and that guy was really good. And that's where I learned to cheat at storm chasing, too, because I would go to where he would say the hot spots. They got circulation over at Cross Timbers, and – so that's where I would go, and that's what got me into storm chasing. But the couple of years after that tornado hit, fucking, I scared to death. I went to I went to the cellar more in from nineteen eight seventy nine to nineteen eighty three than I have in my entire life combined. Because every time a storm came up, your ass was in a fucking cellar. People were, you know, it's lightning oh, strikes yeah. twice, and people say, well, the chance of it hitting it twice in the same spot. You're right, unless it's in Moore, Oklahoma. And Moore, Oklahoma will have another tornado this year. Them fuckers have been hit multiple times. My grandpa times. got hit twice up there. Yeah. Moore? Yeah. yeah. I've never been through a tornado. Hopefully you never will be. My what? grandpa was watching the Jeffersons. He said he's sitting there watching the Jeffersons, and he didn't have any idea. And he's, Of course, he's 85 years old, and he heard, heard some roar going on, and he heard something hit the door. And he walked up, and he opened the daggum door, and, of course, there was cars and everything it was destroying everything across the street all he had time to do was in there grab my grandmother and grab her and fall down into the uh hallway and that's when a suburban come right through his oh, shit. Deal. i mean he was that close to death um the last storm we had here um jesse was we were getting ready for mexico so jesse was tanning my wife was tanning at mom and jeff's house jeff was of course chasing and there was about 30 seconds in there because they were calling for like 70, 80 mile an hour straight line winds. Actually, they were calling for 100 plus. Memphis, we had 114 mile an hour where yeah. I was at. So it hit here. And I've I've always heard that it sounds like a train outside. And there was about 30 seconds in there. Like, I was like, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> whoop, whoop. Yeah. <laughs> but I, the boys heard it hit and they're sitting next to me. We were watching uh, TV and they're like, do we need to go somewhere, Dad? I said, well, fuck, there's no. And I was going to my local. I never watch locals stations and they didn't have us in any tornado warning or tornado watch so i was like i think we're okay but my ear said motherfucker there's trouble outside do you uh so i called jeff or jeff I, I went to facebook and jeff's like there's not a tornado warning in knock city yeah, the sirens was going sirens on my phone's yeah. ringing i'm looking at my computer and i'm like there's no tornado. there's not even no rotation because i can i got an app i can tell yeah. and i look and i said there's nothing there and that's why i put it because my phone was ringing and i'm fucking I'm telling you, I'm under a fucking hole in fucking Memphis, Tennessee, Texas. Yeah, it's 114 mile an hour winds and was blowing me off the road, and I couldn't see shit. And I, it was, it was it, where I was was bad. At home, it wasn't. But well, I did. Uh, I heard that, and I was like, Wait, "Did I miss uh, something here?" The, the Wichita Falls tornado. We stayed in our closet, and I'll never forget. I went in the backyard. My dad finally, God damn it, Jeff, get in the house now. And I was with him, and we lived in Bonnie Homes, and we could see the sign at United across from Kickapoo Airport, and that some bitch just crumbled the sign, the United sign, just crumbled like foil. And Dad said, get in the house. And I went in the house. Untie, we had a horse. I had to untie the horse. Went in the house, and when I was going in the house, the lawnmower went across the yard by <clears> itself. <throat> a push mower went across the yard by itself. And I got in there, and you could hear glass breaking, and everybody's praying and crying. It's a come to Jesus moment. I'm telling you right now, there are no sinners in a foxhole. Everybody is praying to Jesus. You ought to be my my uh, cousin Eddie Livingston. 
He was coming out of Albertsons. Remember? Yeah, Albertson. my mom worked at Albertsons. He she come, didn't have to go to work for six there, months. He had his groceries in a deal, and all of a sudden he looked over. And you, you remember it used to be that uh, drainage ditch right Yeah, on Southwest Kemp. Parkway in Kemp, he yes. He said he just, everybody was running to it as fast as they could. And Eddie just had time. He said, he goes, all I had time to do was dive. You know, and it's like a 15-foot yeah, drop a, in the bottom. He did not care. And he said that some gun <laughs> held him up in the air for Oof. about, it seemed like 10 to 15 seconds. Really? And then all of a sudden, he could see the people reaching and trying to grab him. Then finally just dropping. He said, that's how close to death I was. That was, that, that was a horrible storm. But, oh. and, and so... When we came, we, when I left, the solid black was coming because it was such a big tornado. That's it what people. Like a big cloud. Yes, people that are in tornadoes, most of them are in a. They, they don't see much. They'll see a little bit, a little 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 stove top or a little F two tornado. It can kill you. Can do a lot of damage. But when you see one like more and like that had, it don't look like a tornado because it's so wide you can't yeah. see the ends of it. It's just solid black and stuff coming at you. And I remember the smell when that tornado. And when I still today chase tornadoes and i go past a, like right behind a tornado i can smell it and i'll there never that the smell of that sucker will that never it? ever yep and, that was it and that don't do it just no that's not that one uh, on the left is a better picture of it. that's yeah, across from yeah. lake wichita that but, is yeah yes. but you see the top one of that that's see that that's another funnel right there that is right there on the other side of lake wichita that storm right there right now is getting together that's between holiday and wichita uh -huh. falls that's when it comes together and you see there's four different yeah. bounce there's four tornadoes there they go into one and that's now. How often does that happen? Oh, I've I've seen multiple vortexes a lot of times. The but, big big tornadoes, the whole wall clouds rotate. But do they always come together like that? No, not always. I've uh, me and Chuck followed a storm at Cherokee, Oklahoma, all the way to Alva, and it was two tornadoes that were by that went by itself for stayed on the ground for forty five miles. Just two big twin pipes together. April tenth. <clears throat> yep. <clears throat> they all never Ter forget. But the sound. Tuesday. What the, time? What time of day did it? Six o'clock at night. Right yeah. at six o'clock. Did you have uh now you were on the north side of the storm, so did you get hail where you were at? Because we didn't have hail. No, we, we didn't even hardly got much rain even. No. And but, to tell you the truth, it really didn't blow a hell of a lot over there. I, I don't remember the wind blowing as much. It did blow because I remember wind is blown out. Or we thought my mom's like, Oh my god, my house is blowing down. But she had windows like uh in the in the flower pots in the windows, and we had opened up the story is you want to open up all your windows right. so the pressure don't blow your house up. I got news for you. I think it that's bullshit. Make, it don't make one. I think it's a, I think it's the same as being on a fucking airplane turning your cell phone off. It, it, if that, it's kind of like crash coyote it. hunting advice, you know. Yeah. Anybody can throw a line of bullshit. Out <laughs> yeah. There. That don't yeah. mean it's right. No. I, I don't. Yeah. I don't think the windows being closed yeah, is going to yeah. be a fucking thing on your house. Yeah. But, when, when it takes everything but the concrete yes. on there. Uh, well, if we'd had the goddamn windows. <laughs> yeah. Chuck, yeah. Uh, my buddy Chuck Smith. They lived on. Uh, God dang it. Right off, it don't matter. People listen to this, most of them from Wichita Falls, anyways. Anyways, they lived over by Midwestern, and they went to the, the, the their closet and stuff. He said when they got out of there, the guy across the street was an Indian family, a doctor, and they didn't know what was going on. Their house was completely not, not harmed at all. Yeah, and they didn't Ashworth. have a clue. I didn't figure they'd have footage of this, but oh, there was there was, was, oh, there was chaser. There was chasers back then. You remember For, KTRN? Yep. Yeah, that was the only radio. The station. real John. Where is that? Real is that, John Steele. Is that at a, a news station having the? That's on uh, the the condos over there. On yes, Monona, yes, that, uh, yes. That's Vantage right by where yeah, right Vantage by Point where Point. Clay was not very far from yeah, there. Yeah, that's about two blocks from where I was, where that picture was taken. So there's Midwestern. It ripped the it ripped the roof off the Coliseum. Yeah, the mall. Lots of people. I knew people at the mall were at movies. Yeah, it's like you come out of the movie the theater and all of a sudden light goes yeah, off and yeah. shit. There's nothing there. So that's just how you saw the black. That's what you saw coming Ugh. at you. And that's what I saw coming at me because it got about a half mile from me. That's old Kentucky Fried Chicken by Wichita General Hospital right there. See, it looks dark, mm -hmm. but I guess it was just... It, it got it dark. Shit, it, they, they do some stuff that's so weird. Bill Crow's house, he worked over at Certainty. His whole house... Look at that fucking picture. Yeah, well, well you give me the heebie-jeebies now, damn it. But his whole house Go was back to that demolished. Picture a minute. And uh, except for one wall, that one wall where his uh, <clears throat> fireplace was, not a picture moved on it. And he had his certainty check, in, uh, check paycheck on the mantelpiece. Never even blew it off. Never touched it. But the whole rest of the house yeah. is concrete. Well, and they say, like, if you have canned goods and shit like that, throw all that away oh, yeah. because dust and splinters Over will be at the inside. Museum, I don't know. 
I guess they still, when they had the terrible Tuesday deal, remember the liquor store over there where Brahms is right now? Yes. They had that liquor store up there, and they have bottles of whiskey with pieces of uh, uh, wood in it. Yeah. Never Sealed broke up. Seal. Sealed and yeah. seals perfectly intact. That, right that picture out there, why that's important is, yeah. Back in the day, Wichita Falls didn't have a viaduct above it. So that's how you got to go from north to south. Like if you're going to Dallas, to Oklahoma City, that's what you would have drove. Could you imagine, and see the grain elevator there? That's the Atbury yeah. grain elevator. Could oh, you imagine, that's by the, that's by yes. the big. Could yeah. you imagine driving and you're going towards Fort Worth from <laughs> Oklahoma City? And you're that's what that you're looking at. High rise. No, no, there was no high rise then. <laughs> right, but today. That's, yeah, but just now, back then though, could you imagine in Ooh. 1979 being on that and there were 17 fucking traffic lights right there in a row that you had to hit? And, and that's what you're looking at. I'm about to shit my pants looking at it right now. <laughs> that's, that is the look that I yeah, saw. Yeah, let's go, Chase. I want to go do that. That looks fucking awesome. When my dad told me to get in the house. That's, that, that was your last that, That's yeah, the look image. that I had. That's yeah. the limit, image that I had right there. But how far was it from you? Or a could half you even... mile. You know was, what was weird about that deal was after it was over with, and there's nothing... You don't have you don't know where the roads are. Right. You don't know where you're at. <clears throat> you're standing. I mean, unless you were near the mall, mm -hmm. but all the neighborhoods was fucking look like Hiroshima. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was just. Did they have looting afterwards? Oh yeah, yeah. They, yeah until they, they shot a guy one night. Yeah, the National Guard the shot National and killed Guard, a guy. Yeah, the National Guard did. Yep, like yeah. the second. The first night we were so the, looting is nothing new. Like y'all, y'all no, were, y'all were, y all were Jesus degenerates was then. Yeah. Um, Showtime! Give me that. It didn't last. Zenith. It didn't last very long, though. No, hell no. You know, I, I tell you what. When me, me and me and Coach and Jeremy went to <clears throat> Moore, Oklahoma, the day after that, we were there the day of, and then the next two days later, we go back to the tw after the tornado, and we're driving, and we went to Home Depot, and I bought, or, or not me, we had people in Knox City contributed about five thousand dollars, and we went up there and we bought water, and we bought. All kinds of food. We stopped in Wichita and we filled up the truck with shit and we unloaded it and we had money left over and we went to Oklahoma City, to Walmart, to Home Depot. We bought everything they had and we went to these neighborhoods and we would drop stuff off and we would drop off this stuff. And <clears throat> there was, we were, we were in Moore, Oklahoma and I looked over and there was a chest of drawers there and there was a money bag and some stuff and some drawers and stuff. And I told them, I said, you know, it, as a person that's a nosy fucker i'd like to open that money bag up and see what's in there just curious right, yeah. but i wouldn't dare get out of the truck and look like i'm going through someone's yeah, shit because yeah, i'm not going to yeah, loot or nothing right. but i'm i'm curious to what's in that fucking bag right uh -huh. there and there was an atf guy that come there and he knew we had a mutual friend and we were talking and stuff and i told him said check out that money bag and see what's in that something because i wanted to know what was in that fucking bag just curious but you see people's personal shit there you know, and it just laid out there, and then people don't have somebody ten miles from there is wondering yeah. where's my fucking treasure drawers at. And yeah. There it is. So I, right uh, there, it was an F five for yeah. right when it went past Ryder, and then whatever that name is, you That's and your fucking, Park. you and your Indian names. Where's it saying though? It's F five at on the scale red. right there. Yeah. Or maybe that's F four. No, it's that's orange. it's yeah. orange. There is some reds that's along orange. Colonial Park. Colonial Park is right by the Country Club on the other side. Nice neighborhoods. Now, what, what's funny is if you go from four to right. Now, where did you live, Jeff? I live way back over here by Candlewood Trailer Park. No, no. I live back. At that time, we lived back on this other side. We lived at Bonnie Homes, which Bonnie Homes would have been. Well, see where South Winds is? Uh, see, come yeah. up right there. We would have been not very far from there. The tornado so veered it went off. north of you. It went north of me, yes. But it was coming right it was, down at me, right down Southwest Parkway is where it was coming. And then it kind of jogged it, back it, northeast. It jogged, jogged north and then went right across Sun Valley, Southwest in <clears> Industrial <throat> Park. But the heavy, the worst part was through the middle of the town where most of the houses and stuff lived. And where where we lived at, or not where we lived at, but like the Ryder area, from, from when you got back then, when you got to uh, probably McNeil and you went, to the east, most of those homes were built during the GI Bill after World War II. So most of those homes were smaller homes, and uh, now they're all brand newer homes. That, that whole yeah. area was rebuilt, but you could not from 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 Sock Center all the way to Ryder High School. There's fucking it was nothing but debris. I mean, like I said, it, it looked like Hiroshima. Really? Yeah, I mean, there wasn't a street I sign. Could. If if you didn't know where you were at and lived yeah, over that's there, where, it was weird, where did what did y'all do with all the people that were now homeless? Did they set up like trailer, Red Cross? No, the Kiwanis Park was a government trailer place. They brought in trailers, mm -hmm. and I bet there was I bet ten thousand to twenty thousand people in Wichita Falls lived in government trailers for six months to two years 
until they got them all done. I mean, there was they just put up they built a trailer park at Kiwanis Park where we played kid baseball. That was nothing but a yeah. You hmm. know, it was. I tell you a story. My dad was fireman Bud Davis. Bud told Dad he said we got it. They got in a, a bathtub. People were skinny then because you couldn't put three or four people in a bathtub today. No, no. you couldn't put me or you. <laughs> yeah, in no, no doubt. Today. One That'd of us is gonna make it out of here. <laughs> My hot tub, maybe, but yeah. a bathtub, no. But they got in their bathtub, and he said they had a mattress over them, and he said, "Fucking, they could hear the hell breaking loose, and it finally stopped, and then it was over." He said they pushed that 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 mattress off of him, and he said. There's a goddamn wheel in front of us. He said, look, wheel had an axle on it. It was a whole car in his oh, bathroom. Yeah. What scares me is like, if I go underground into the cellar and a tornado hits, what the fuck am I going to come up to? Like, is it, what if a car is on top and I can't you, push the cellar door That's why you let off. people know you're in the cellar. That's what dad and them did, though. <clears throat> when, when it got people out of cellars? When, when dad, d- dad left our house at 6 o'clock, my mom and dad were divorced at that time, and my dad owned a house over by Sunnyside. Dad went over to his house. He came back, and I'll never forget this. My, we had these Navy blankets that my grandpa had in World War II, and for somehow we got these things. The w- itchiest wool, nasty fucking jacket, and they had a black stripe on them, and they said U.S. Navy on them. And we had Navy blankets, and it was just you'd watch TV, and you get under a Navy blanket, they were itchy. And my, my dad said, he goes, he, I, he told my mom, he said, Christine, he goes, it's bad. He goes, I don't know when you're going to see me again. He goes, I've got to go in. I know they need help. They're going to have to call for every fireman in town. He goes, it's bad, 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 bad. He goes, I'll call you when I can. He, and he gave, and he said, she goes, what do we need? He says, we got any blankets or anything you need. They're going to need anything. So my mom gave him the Navy blankets. Fucking best thing ever. <laughs> but I remember thinking, I wonder if we'll see our, if someone will bring them back. No, fuck no. You never no, see them again. But we didn't see my dad for three days. Dad said when he got the fire station, he said it took him forever to get there, and they called a reserve truck in, and they went down alleys with spray paint, and they would turn ga- natural gas off, and they would check for sellers. And if if back then, if you would look when you went down the streets, there'd be a house that have an X painted on it, and an X meant that they had cleaned it out, and they had, but they they would write an X meant that they had checked they the checked. whole deal, and they went to through every neighborhood, door to door to door, doing X's and stuff. And it happened at six o'clock at night, so it You're was doing dark this at midnight. And, there's no, there's no light. When you take street lights out of a fucking town, it's dark, it, it fucking dark. dark, dark, dark. And it was dark, dark, dark. But when we went to bed that night, we had an old oil lamp. And I remember it was on. And my mom, luckily, we, we, we had a jug of water. We just had a gallon of milk jug with water. So we had water. And I remember my mom giving me a whore bath. Me and Tony both washed our faces and stuff out of the toilet, the water on the back side of the toilet, toilet yeah. on the back side of it and gave us. And, and, and I remember that. And we went to bed that night. And I woke up that night, and all you heard was helicopters all night. And the National Guards was coming in. Mm-hmm. And that next day, me and my buddies got on our bikes. We was going to go see what happened to our school and shit. Like, it was fun. For two days, we rode around and went to all the damn <laughs> Starvation <laughs> Army little fucking deals. We had sandwiches and yeah. Cokes. Because it, people in town popped back fast. It, you'd be really it surprised. Crazy, yeah. Because it went from from – Everybody recovering to who's hurt. Let's get everybody fixed. To we're rebuilding, right. and when they start rebuilding, you go to fucking which we didn't have Home Depots and Lowe's back then. We no. had Sutherlands and Gibson, yes, and stuff like that. You go there, you stand in line to get lumber. I can believe you be in line all freaking day. My dad had a guy working for him. His job was to go wait in line all day long at the. Pay less cash ways or whatever the Slum hell it was. Burger, Sh- yeah, yes. Down there. yeah. But the old lumber yards. But it was a day I'll never, I'll never forget. When we were in, uh, we were in Moore, Oklahoma. We went to a neighborhood. And we went two or three times. And we took food and drinks to these people. So I got to know some people and I talked to people. And this couple come out to me and I was like, "You're the guys from Texas." And I said, "Yes, ma'am." She says, "We sure appreciate y'all coming and checking on us." And they were trying to get their stuff cleaned up and. I was talking to him. I said, uh, do you mind me asking you about the storm? She's like, no, no, not at all. I said, were y'all home when the tornado hit? She goes, yeah. She goes, we watch on the news, which Oklahoma City has the best storm chasing coverage. Yeah. It is absolutely amazing how good they do. They break in. They do live tornadoes anywhere in Oklahoma. It's great. And um, she said, we were watching TV, and the tornado was coming. We thought, surely it's going to go up. And as it got closer, it's like, no. He goes, we got to get Ain't something to up. do. They, <laughs> this is the funniest shit ever, are motorcycle riders. This is an older couple. They were 70 years old. They put on their leathers and their their fucking uh, Helmet. helmets <laughs> and they rode it out it. rode it out in a closet with their leathers on and a helmet. That guy said, when we opened that leather door, or he said, We opened up that closet door. He said, We didn't have a roof on half our house. <laughs> but they had the but they had leathers on and the, you know, that's that's when you're scared. 
Oh yeah. When, you, when it's come to your life, is that way? Do whatever it takes. Yep. Mm. So, anyways, that's maybe I won't go twenty. Me, my way time. is I get in my vehicle and I haul ass. You do? I remember one time. This is funny shit. This, he's a storm chaser. I'm a storm, storm runner. runner. <laughs> <laughs> we were. Uh, I was working on some spurs at uh, Sam Ruby's in Archer. I mean, they're grinding on them, and all of a sudden. That's the worst sound in the world. Holy shit. <laughs> and I didn't even know we were supposed to have bad weather. So I go out the door and I look up and you can see it right over Turn the top in. of Arch City. <clears throat> and I got a goddamn $50 pickup that I won in a dice game that may or may not break down in a mile. <laughs> and I haul ass to Winthorpe as fast as I can. And I, I ain't got hardly any gas, but I am getting somewhere wherever I get <laughs> So I go all the way to the Winthorpe and I cut back on a little back road, farm market road, goes back over there towards Markley. And that's when it got terrifying for me because I was already scared shitless. <laughs> but when I get up there, there's about 10 cars and they all got that little spur. Oh, you're the in the good spot. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Oh. And I, I knew what the little spurly <laughs> cars were. And then all these guys were out in the chasers and I was like, hey, uh, what are y'all doing? And I knew what the hell they was doing. Ah, oh, we're trying to put this uh, ball in the uh, path of a tornado. You think it's coming? He said, yeah, I, think yeah, it's right. I gotta go. Whoa. You turn around with the other oh, way. That. No, I'm, I'm still going east. And I said, so I go east, I go over there to Markley, and I come back on the dirt road, and I come out over there in between Archer and Alney on 79. And I thought, well, I got south of it. <laughs> I can see it back over there, and then all of a sudden it says, the radio, I got QV 103 on it, so uh, we have a tornado warning for Young County. A tornado was spotted two miles north of Alney, Texas. Fuck, I'm two miles north of Alney. <laughs> so Did I haul ass to Archer, and I am on EEE. <laughs> and I just finally rolled into Archer City, but that was the longest hour and a half of my life. <laughs> and, you, and you ran into two yeah, tornadoes yeah, in exactly. the process. The gas gauge but is the a, motherfucker didn't get me. It didn't get the, you. The gas gauge is a tough thing on chasing. Oh, God. <laughs> because you, you, you need to stop. If you get to three quarters of a tank and you ain't on a storm, because once you get on one, you don't want to get off. Yeah. And the worst thing is, is when you do get into tornadoes and you're chasing a bunch, all them towns let them out of electricity. Yeah. No electricity, you ain't getting no gas. And I've been down that road before where we've ran into three or four different towns an hour and everybody's electricity. And I'm like, Jesus, we're down to eight. You eighth know of how tank. you prevent that though, don't you? <clears throat> you don't you even don't go. Fucking go on yeah, but it's no, it's you no, stay, you yeah. stay at home on the couch and turkey I got hunt. A memo that said, do not storm chase. <laughs> it's fucking stupid. Yeah. <laughs> Leave it to Jeff. Leave Jeff is my Jeff. weather in the sky. I, I love to chase, and I'm so ready for spring to get here. And we're going to have a very active spring, it looks like, if they're, the models are correct. It's showing, you know, a lot of rain. And well, fuck, how much rain did y'all get? Y'all are damn near oh, floating yeah. away. Yeah. yeah, we had a good, but for us, from two to three and a half. But w for us to get, get caught shit. up on all the rain, like the groundwater and stuff, we need, we had an inch of rain, which is good. We're way ahead of last See, year. We had an inch and a half two weeks yeah. before right. that. So our water table was catching up. Haskell's had five and a half inches of rain since January 1. Yeah. Wettest. And we've had one inch. No, we've had, I think. And we're 20 miles away. 2.6. I, right. I looked it up the other day. But we, we've just had, we've had ranch rain, I call it, just yeah. lawn rain. We haven't had the runoff rains, but we've had rain. That's what we are We are wet. We are wet. Two and a half years. We are yeah. wet compared to what we normally are this time of year. Um, let's talk about the tornado, or the tornado. Let's talk about the coyotes. So you last year, you decided Coyote you're going to start killing... Killing a pig, a cow, cow pig, Get a right cow enough. every single day for 365 days. Are yeah. you glad it's over? Dude, there is not words to express how <laughs> glad I am to have. I mean, that, you know, January 1st, that sounded like a great <laughs> idea. I thought, yeah. man, this will be cool because I, like I say, I've been wanting to write a book. It's something you and, enjoy doing anyways. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and I've been wanting to write a book, and I knew that is something probably nobody's ever done. And, of course, I get... You know, a lot of the Facebook guys, oh, shit, I know guys done it twice, two a day, and blah, 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 blah. Nobody's Go ever done government it. Government trapper, and I'm, that's bullshit. I said, and like, you know, they swear it's up here, and with some of them government trappers up there, one, they get some holidays off, and they're going to get yeah. they're gonna, <laughs> Paid they're, holidays. Hey, let's fuck, we got a week off, let's go fucking coyote hunt every <laughs> day. That'll, that'll blow smoke. But it was, so I knew it was going to be good, and I really needed it to be, you know, I was going to keep track of, you know, all the data for it. And I ain't going to lie. 
I did. I kept good data for about the first four or five months. After that, I went fucking hunting. It was fucking sucks. <laughs> you know, the data dropped off considerably. And I went hunting. The sun was shining, and I killed one. Thank the fucking Lord. Uh, but I mean, because you know, to do it one is one thing, but to do it last year was unbelievable because of the because conditions? we had y'all remember last windy spring was the worst wind we ever for four fucking months yeah and i'm not talking a little bit of wind i'd be out there in a plowed field where it was blowing me over and you okay. could not let go of your tripod with a heavy gun on because it, it would blow it over trying to kill a fucking cow in that yeah. and uh well then you go through that four months you go Whew, thank God, summertime. Then we had 67 straight days of fucking 100 degree right. temperature. And there was probably about 10 days in between there that were 99. I remember a lot of times in the middle of the night, it was 100, 99 degrees. I yeah. remember one night was the hottest. Was well, thermal, when all the rocks are just, uh, you know, the degrees. dirt claws are yeah. the same degrees as the. Uh, you know, it, it made it tough to see. I had a cow one night out come in. I was on a tank dam. It's a 500 acre wheat field, nothing but plowed field. And, you know, I ought to be able to see. And I've got a 360 view and I'm looking. And all of a sudden, there, I mean, out of nowhere, this cow pops up right 50, 60 yards behind me. And I go, oh shit, right down wind. But I could not see him until he got right up on me. Right. No matter what phase I had on my thermal. And of course, he <coughs> ran off. And luckily, I shot him running. But. I mean, it was so unbelievably hard. And when I made it to the fall, and then the other thing during, you know, I'm right in the middle of the worst drought we've we've had. Year Since and a, 11. Year and a half was worse. I mean, we dug out 28 tanks, $325,000 worth of that gum tank. And so, I mean, I'm having to move cattle, do this. So all day I'm working. And when it's 1,000 degrees, cows don't move. So you, so I got to go out night. Well, that's the bad thing about night is from I've got I'd have to get up at midnight mm -hmm. and go kill my cow because I had from midnight till daylight the right. darkness to try to find one. Boy, and then when you don't find one from midnight to there, now you got to hunt. Then you got to go work. Then I got to go back, and I got two and a half hours in the summer. Yeah, because it, it doesn't get dark, dark uh, until nine, nine thirty, nine, ten o'clock. Nine thirty. Yeah. Did you ever have any lucky days where during the your work day you bumped into a coyote somewhere? Oh yeah. Oh, thank, oh, thank God. Oh my God. I, I guarantee you, that's that's like running into Pamela Anderson. And she said, "Hey, let's hey. fuck." <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, I remember one day because. Usually I always carry my sharpshooter rifle with yeah. me, and one day I didn't have nothing but a fucking thirty thirty. Well, thirty thirty, I opened sights, and there was a fucking coyote running across the weed field. Oh shit! I, I get out, and I still got that fucking picture on Facebook, boy. And I shoot that some bitch, and just lucky, just pure fun. Everybody's man, you're a good shot that. No, that was fucking pure dead ass luck. <laughs> and then another time, same field, one sees me and he comes across there and I shoot him out there at 400 something yards on the run and it was a goddamn miracle but but oh yeah when you get them day if you kill one in the day you know I don't sleep a hell of a lot anyway and uh that helped me but after you go so long you kind of want a little sleep but yeah so, it's, well and you just want to be like a normal person like I just want to go home fucking watch TV kiss the wife and just not do that not not have the threat of oh here go fucking coyote hunting in six hours People don't even understand how much shit I missed out on last year. Yeah. Because I couldn't. I couldn't go to this game or this ball game or this, this, there until I got that cow. Everybody say, hey, you want to go eat a steak? I said, well, I don't know. I got to go kill a cow first. If I can go kill that cow, I'll be able to go. There was a lot of pressure. And then, you know, so somebody asked me here a while back. He goes, you know, you killed 430 cows. And uh, did that make you a better shot? I said, fuck no. <laughs> I said, it made me worse because... The pressure that, you know, the last cow, this is a pure example, the last cow I killed last year on December 31st, I called my boss's wife, Elizabeth. She's a great photographer, and she likes going with me hunting and all that. And uh, so we got up early. I'm pretty sure it was a Sunday. But anyway, we get up early. It's going to be a beautiful day. I'm going to have her to document the last cow of the deal on there, and she took these pictures, and I mean, and we were over by Kickapoo, so we got the backside of Kickapoo. And the geese, you know, coming off the water were down below us because we got a lot of hype. They had some badass pictures and all that. And, I mean, 
perfect fucking setting for my couch. Except. I called from daylight till noon and never saw a fucking cow. Not one. Oh, no, I take it back. One time, I knew I was going to set up in the wrong place, and uh, but I had to put her up to be able to get the shot up there at one spot, and I said, please don't let a cow come into my right, because there's a left hand, I mean, a right hand shooter, that's where you, yeah, you can't get off turn. with. And I'm on the ground, and... <clears throat> Guess what? Comes in the right. 30 was. seconds. This son bitch blows in right to me. And, uh, of course, there he was. And he looks at me because he ain't 30 yards from me. And I go, oh, shit. And then all of a sudden she's going, he was in and out before I could get turned and get out shot on. So then we left, went home. And hell, that was when, uh, I can't remember, there was a football game, you know, playoff football game. Yeah. So I started watching him and, and so I said, well, I go out tonight. So then it got dark, and me and my boys. I said, well, I'll take Jake and Dawson and go with me, and we'll kill a cow, and they'll help their dad and mark the deal. <laughs> Fuck no, could not find a fucking cow. And it gets to be about 10 o'clock, so I'm in the last two hours of this deal. Finally, we get on a big 1,000-acre wheat field over there, and I'm calling, I'm calling, I'm calling, I'm calling. And I could see, like, two or three cows way the hell out there. They ain't playing nothing. They'd heard Clee's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, they had one <laughs> cow pops out the wood over there about a mile. Comes out of the wood. And I said, oh, God. And, of course, now it's 1030. This little bastard, he comes in. Oh, shit, there's a blade of grass. He looks at the grass, and he digs a little bit. <laughs> ah, okay, then he comes a little bit more. Oh, shit, there's a duck. Is that a duck flying over there? I mean, it took him 48 <laughs> minutes for that son of a bitch to come across there, and then he gets 100 yards because I could have shot him at 200. Mm -hmm. But there is a lot of pressure on this <laughs> fucking cow. I knew, I knew this is the last cow of the deal, and I'm probably not going to call up another one. And I don't want to blank on the last deal. So I ain't shitting you. I was shaking like a 14-year-old kid getting his first piece of pussy. I was like, oh, 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 oh. And that son of a And Jake's going, kill him, Dad. I'm waiting for a better shot. I'm waiting for a better shot. I'm waiting for a better shot. And he goes, and he comes a little more, a little more. And like I say, he, he's just kind of fucking around, thinking. And finally, and of course, he's coming straight in on me. And he ain't giving me that broad shot. I'm waiting for that's the... A, that's a narrow yeah, shot. I want the, want the, <laughs> Turn sideways, yeah, bitch. <laughs> yeah. A lot of room for air when they're coming straight at you. And, and then finally, when he gets about 100 yards, he turns broadside. And uh, I shoot. I ain't shooting. I'm shaking. And I... Boom! And I shoot him, and he drops. I mean, hammer. And I, I mean, it was just like I ejaculated everything <laughs> I had inside. Of it. <laughs> and uh, we get out there, and Jake goes, "Good shot, Dad! Shot him right in the fucking head." And I was like, "Yeah, right where I was aiming." Right at. I, was <laughs> I was aiming for the shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> I was shaking so goddamn bad. But he was dead. I'm telling you. How, what number was that? Four thirty. Four hundred and thirty. Out of the 365 days, how many days did you shoot a coat? Four. Well, four days I had blank. So 361. Only three days did were, only one day was it coyote related. Three different days I had trouble with my gun. First time, that you talking about a mad son of a bitch. <laughs> I just, I had that buddy of mine, Randy Bell, he bought me this gun. I mean, it's a badass Alamo Precision with a thermal on it. And to tell you the truth, is, had he not bought me that gun, I may I'd have had a lot more right. empty days on, oh. than this because it's twenty custom built twenty two Creedmoor with an IRA bolt TL thirty five scope. I mean, fucking. Does that say anything to you, Andy? No, yeah, but it sounds either. fancy. Yeah, sounds but good. This son of a bitch is badass, and so I get out. Well, I'm the most illiterate dumb son of a bitch there is, you know. And I can kill cows, but I can't spell cow. And so, uh, so I get over there and I pull into the feed yard. And I always know there's a little coastal field right there. I'll scan out my window. And I've got my gun already turned on over there, knowing. And as soon as I pull in right there, 75 yarders, cow, what are you doing? <laughs> and I go, holy shit. So I reach over there. I get in a hurry. And I grab that gun. And I finally get it. Like, dang it, it's hung up on my damn emergency <laughs> brake. I finally get it out. And I get it out. And I go, and he's standing broadside. Boom. And I can't even see where the damn bullet shot. <laughs> <laughs> the cow runs off, and I go, God 
damn. I said, I don't think I was shaking that bad. <laughs> so anyway, I said, I threw it off. And like I say, it's getting late. So I, I head back into the uh, into the wheat field, and I go out there and did a lot of spot stuff. So I, but I go down there to an old uh, pump jack, and I start making a call. I hit a howl. Sure enough, here comes a cow. He comes in, and I hit a little old grab ass sound, and here he comes in hot. That son bitch gets twenty five yards from me. All right, <laughs> going to bed early tonight. <laughs> Boom! I miss him, and the cow goes, "What the fuck, fuck was, was that?" that? Yeah, <laughs> I miss him so bad. I go, "Did and he I go, scare God him?" Dang. And I couldn't even see where the bullet hit. And then we're in a plowed field, and I go, "Oh shit, we got something going wrong." Kyle finally walks off, goes over there about 30 yards, turns, and he's like, man, I know I heard a, bump, a gunshot. He's like, boom, I miss him again. He goes, that was a fucking that was gunshot. It. So he runs out there about 100 yards. I miss him again. And then I miss him a, 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 a 150, and then I'm out of fucking bullets. <laughs> I only took four bullets with me. So, and then later on, long story short, on four different coyotes, I, I, I missed 12 times in that little, and it got... Before I realized that something was fucked up on my gun, <laughs> I'm far enough away to the house there ain't no good. So I'm trying to trying to see where the son bitch <laughs> shoots, so I just guess. But the next day I took it out there and I shot. And I got a four foot piece of board sitting on the deal. It wouldn't hit that board. Would you did you bump your scope? No. The first I, day. I, I, this goes back to my ignorance I told about. I got this new scope on there. Well, when I was reaching and grab it, when you reach and grab that the top will change the reticle. Mm -hmm. It'll change it from an X or a T or just a dot or whatever, and it'll also change the color. Well, you've got to sight in each one of those colors, <laughs> and I had changed it from red to green. I was like, oh. man, red, red, green, green, right. and I, I didn't have no goddamn clue, and I went, finally, old Gage Porter come over there, and he goes, hey, you dumb motherfucker, and he, he got it sighted in, and then, uh, yeah, so... Like say, so that so, was so you only had one day where the coyotes one didn't day cooperate, where and you couldn't I, find that. I thing. didn't have an opportunity to kill a coyote, and I, I, I had as when I had my twenty two two fifty, I had a coyote come in there, and this goes back to if I'd have had that Creedmoor, that mm -hmm. twenty two Creedmoor, three hundred yards with the old twenty two two fifty is kind of that pushing it out there. I mean, I killed a bunch out there, but not with the pressure. And I had a coyote <laughs> come in at three hundred. And that's the only coyote I called in that night. And it was kind of early. And he come in there, he stood up there, and I should have took the shot. But, it, hell, he was coming in. Uh, but And he dropped down, was coming to me, and never saw him again. What and, did – uh? But if I'd have had that Creedmoor, fucking – that 22 Creedmoor, <clears throat> 300 yards, that fucking shoot him and kill him. Did so – I asked you this, and you already told me this, but I'm going to wonder best this. Out of all the area, you shot most of your coyotes within a 20-mile circle, Right. Really about a 10-mile circle. And how much the population did you notice drop off? It, it To me, it seemed like it gained. Ain't that crazy? It is crazy. I killed 189 coyotes at that feed yard. 189. All right, then over to other feed yard. It, we got a little preconditioning yard. so And uh, 189 over there. And then 59 at James Mitchell's little feed yard. After killing 59 at James, which was later in the game, you know, he told me about it late in the game, like this fall. He said, hey, we're losing some kids over there. I said, bye, bye. You can go over there. And he's got a bunch of country in. It's right next to my bullpen. So I was going over there, boy. And, I mean, it was a hot spot. Well, I think the first night I killed. Of course, you know, when I started the earth in this deal, one a day, and then I thought I was going to ration them. Well, <laughs> toward the end of the deal, I was like, fuck, I ain't putting a dent in these motherfuckers. <laughs> so I was going to try to get to 500. And, of course, I growed out of that pretty quick. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I started killing multiple. You know, I killed eight at one stand. Yeah. And uh, that was at his house. But, anyway, I killed him 59 over at that place. In December, where I'm almost done, after killing a million cows over 59 cows over to his place, he tells me, he says, hey, I got I lost a dead over here on the other side of Mo Nose Road, so you might want to go by there. And I killed a triple, and I was tired and ready to go home. But I thought, well, I'll go by there. And I put that damn scanner up, that thermal scanner. And this is after killing 59. I counted 37 that I could see out there at one time. That's crazy. And they're mixed in with all the <coughs> yearlings, so I, can't, I couldn't see Right, them. you can't see what's it what. It blew my mind. Of course, that's what, I mean, I knew... 
you know, all, I've always told anybody, ask me, you know, that's a common question is, uh, at how long do you wait after killing a cow to a spot before you go back and call that spot? For me, hell, back in me and Mitch's early days and Hutch's days when we started, we didn't have a whole lot of country. So we would make three, we would call the same spots three times in a 24-hour hunt and right. kill cows. And a perfect example is my horse barn call the first time, nothing. Second time, nothing. At midnight, nothing. And then at 4 o'clock, we come back up there and call in seven cows and a cat. So so I don't, but uh, but I still, you know, what's good for this cow is good for, uh, say, I got a mansion on a hill over here that's got a, a buffet in it, and old Jeff moves out. Well, you can bet somebody else is going to move back in. Right. And that's the same with cows. They come in there pretty hard, but... I seen some shit last year that I, you know, I've been cow hunting, you know, between my dad when you know we had in and out my whole damn gum life. But last thirty years hard, mm -hmm. and I've seen some shit. But that thermal, it was able, I was able to see some shit that I, and some, you know, as a rancher, we know that we're gonna lose calves and uh, heifer getting down or sick cattle. One night I was over there <clears throat> north of uh, South Eighty Two on Republican Field. And I see this 300 acre field. I can see I got a bunch of bringer, bring, giant, bring, go ahead. bring his cows over there on a deal. And uh, and I could see that she's in distress, but she's far enough away I can't figure out it was. So I started hoofing it that way. I'm walking and I hoof it that way. And as I got close, I could see there were seven cows working her like a caribou. And what what do they do? Do they check? Like, I've in never and out, seen all the way around her. They in just and stress out, her in out. And out. Yeah. And I mean, it's, yeah, singer, <clears throat> nothing wrong with her. Nothing, not a damn thing around. There's 119 of them there with her. Yeah, and uh, they just cut her out and working her in and out, hitting them legs, hitting them legs, hitting them legs. When old Bob come in, Joe comes into the back. And if I wouldn't have been there, they'd have got that bitch down right. without a doubt. And then I was wasn't about three days later. I was telling Lonnie Berger about it, and he said, "Well, I lost a cat there at my house. I fed her last night, and that some gun was dead this morning. There ain't no reason." I said, well, I told him about this deal, and he said, well, come out there. Mm -hmm. I went out there. As soon as it got dark, 13 coyotes come out of the woodwork, and I killed five of them, and I wind up killing like 20-something coyotes at his place right then. And it, well, it was funny. It was it was one of them good pickups because every night I'd go there and I'd call up a coyote and kill one, right. one a day. I go, man, this is a good deal, taking some of the pressure off. And this is when it started cooling off like October. But then one night I was over there, and Man, this has good, been a good hunting hole right <laughs> here. And all of a sudden, I hear, whoop, 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 whoop. And oh, fuck. I had forgotten that Lonnie had five <laughs> big, great Pyrenees <laughs> dogs. And these son of bitches are mean. <laughs> they, they had a deer hunter across the road <laughs> that had to call 911 because they wouldn't let him out of his deer stand. Really? Yeah, and I go, Whoop, showtime's over. <laughs> <laughs> I grabbed my gun and I was as quiet as I could because I had forgotten them, but I'd never heard them bark right. until that night. And they were over there in the woods. I go, okay, turn the collar off. <laughs> oh, shit, we got the you. What? I thought you were going to say you fucking shot one of his do no, dogs. No, no, no. <laughs> what, what of the, um, so you killed 430? 30. 430. 430. Is that the most you've ever killed in a year? I know it's probably a dumb question. Absolutely. What, what, mean, on a normal close. year, do you usually kill 200 maybe? No, I mean, no. Not me personally as a team, you know, we've killed. But even then, you know, because for us, you know, we're January, February, March, <laughs> because we had that false uh, narrative that, hey, we got to save some for next year. No, that was a bunch of bullshit. Not anymore. <laughs> yeah, we got to save some. So January, February, and, you know, we hunt a contest every weekend, January, February, March. So by the time you get to end March, you're fucking burned out of it on it. So you wouldn't, you know, I'm... I would think as an individual, maybe a hundred a year. So and I've never really counted, but would we consider doing like a bobcat of the day and trying to shoot a bobcat every day? There's for no, a year fucking way. <laughs> no fucking way. No fucking way. You know, somebody, somebody <laughs> said that somebody a while back. How about trying a shot, get you killing a day, one a day with shotgun? How about I just go home, <laughs> eat me some fucking uh, Fruit Loops and say, yeah, they, oh, Joe Bob killed a lot of cows last weekend. That's awesome. I'm over it for a minute. That, there's no way to do something else like that, though. Yeah. I mean, you could. I mean, there's no way you're going to shoot that many bobcats anyways. How many cats did you shoot in your – did you not try to even shoot any? No, no. I shot three on accident, and it <laughs> fucking killed my soul because we do not kill a cat during 
uh, off season. You save them for yeah, yeah absolutely for like this predator weekend, San Angelo hunt. But <laughs> one time, uh, one time I over there on Doug Strange's place, there's a cat that would come in damn near every time I made this call, and I killed several cows on. But this cat, I mean, he would always come in, but he'd always. Yeah, he'd walk in like, what the fuck is going on? And he would lay, lay, a lot of times just lay down beside my collar. And then, hell, the cows come in, I'd kill them. But uh, one night, it's getting late, and I knew that was a good spot. And I sit there, because it's kind of a salt skull, but it's green weed, kind of tall. And all of a sudden, I look over there, and here comes a cow running nine. Oh, I could have swore it was a fucking cow. I mean, he is running nine. Oh, coming to me, and, it, and he's in the broom weed, so I can just see the head. And then all of a sudden, he stops out there about 100 yards. Boom! I kill. I like to kill my shit at 100 yards. My, my gun sighted in at 100 yards. When they get closer and get farther, you kind of right. fluctuate. So I shot him. Woo-hoo! We're going to bed early tonight. I get over there and big old fucking cat. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> and then another time, I'm, I'm driving down one of my pasture roads, and I, I'm scanning, and I go, and I mean like, from here to your back wall, 20 yards, there's a brush pile. There's a cow. I can grab my gun, boom, and I kill it. It's another fucking cat. And then the one time at the feed yard, the last time, there was a cat inside the, uh, the hay bales. We don't ever, never in my life hunting out there <laughs> have I ever seen a cat that motherfucker. Sure enough, in the broom, we, one pops his head up, boom, I shoot him between the eyes. It's another cat. And, uh, so just three cats then. Three cats. Did you? Uh, and another amazing stat is, out of four hundred thirty coyotes, I only killed twelve mangy coyotes. That was it. I figured <laughs> well, it would have been way more oh, oh, healthier. Time. Usually we kill twelve in, in in a month, you know. And another amazing stat was uh, only killed fourteen sucking cow bitch dogs. I yeah. would figure that would be more too. Oh my god, yeah. And I killed so many more male cows. I hadn't took taken it down, you right? Know, I, the, the number exact number of males and females, but I know it was glaringly higher males, males. than it was females. And what I, would you see like young pups when you were out there? Because uh, uh, these cows have got to be coming from somewhere. Like they've got to be like breeding or something like that to I catch up. One one pup the whole time. But could you see a lot with your thermal? Oh yeah, yeah. It, that's another. Uh, there were three of them come in, and and it was it kind of fucked me because. I was in a, a kind of an open field, but it had grass, you know, pretty, kind of tall. Mm -hmm. And it, and I was working on two coyotes to my right. And then all of a sudden, you know, I was, they were kind of dicking around coming. And I look around. Oh, shit, there's three of them right here. Well, these coyotes were way, way off. Mm -hmm. And so I had my zoom up pretty high. Right. So I rolled around real quick. Of course, these these had come in, was leaving. And I wind up shooting one. And then the other ones run off into the brush. So then I got my deal and turned my thermal off, and I go out there to find that goddamn cow, and I cannot find that cow. I cannot find him. And I look, and I look, and I look, and I, and I was like, I love this son of a bitch dropped right here. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, I looked for like an hour and a half, and then I went and tried to find another cow, and I did not find another cow because it was already late when I killed this cow. And I was like, God dang, there's another zero. And I said, but I know I killed that. So I'll come back in the morning with uh, my players. I come back next morning, players, and I looked and I looked and I looked and I zigzagged and, you know, grid searched it. Mm -hmm. Nothing, nothing. Boy, I'm mad. I went home, and then when I was coming by there at lunch, because uh, it was hot, summertime, and I looked out there and there was a bunch of buzzards out there. You did coat. What, was hap what had happened, one, it was a pup. It was, it was little, and uh, probably didn't weigh 12 pounds. <laughs> but uh, I had that zoom up. Uh -huh. So what I thought, I shot him out there further. It messed my decent. Right. The cow wasn't God dang, he wasn't God dang 50 yards from where I was. Right. And uh, hell, I, was past thinking, him. I was thinking, yeah, I was <clears throat> out there two, 300 yards thinking, and I went, I'll be God dang. I walked by that some bitch 14 times. Did, uh, I had God dang it lost my train of thought for a second. Had really but yeah, it was, it was, it was kind of weird. Uh, but those are the only, Pup pups that right. I killed some young cows, but all the cows, I mean, greater no number, normal number than usual was how big they were. I mean, big, haired up. Even in the summertime, they're big and beautiful. 
I mean, way much bigger. You know, everybody's talking about Wyman. You know, saying that the coyotes have gotten smaller. I did not see that on my property. Now, it may be out this way, but everybody I talked to is saying the exact opposite. But, I mean, it was crazy. No, he said they were getting bigger. He said they are getting bigger because of helicopter hog hunting. They get more food. Oh, I thought they were more protein. Somebody told they're, me they told no, about no. So they're smaller. bigger. Yeah. Yeah. They're, no, they weigh well, more his, now than yeah. they used to. His theory, he, he thinks it's because of the helicopter pig hunting because they'll just oh, yeah. let them well, lay. Yeah, that'll, that'll and let they've just sure got help. abundance of protein wherever yeah. they're at. Because everybody and it brings coyotes in <clears throat> like crazy. Den. Have you ever? Do you ever have places that they den up that you've ever hunted them out of a den, or do they move their dens around a lot? Or no, you, I mean, yeah, you, typically they'll use the same den. Year after year after year. But. I've never seen a coyote den that I know of, and I'm yeah, sure in the, all my years in the woods, I've oh, been by. You probably went by them a thousand times, thinking it's a badger hole. It don't take. Oh, much it doesn't of, take. They're not oh, very no, big. Oh no, no. You, you know, everybody think you, no. Right. Hell, you see that little old hole, and then it goes up in there, and it'll open up real big. Have you ever dug one open to see what it looks like on nah, the inside? I ain't never. Uh, I'd be curious to see what. I've, like. I've, I've, I'd, I'd find like a fucking get skunk. Me a a pet coyote, find. you know. Yeah, I know. Guy. Well, that's like Tory Cook. You know. Tony Tabby, you know, some of the greatest sounds in the world are, are recorded the, by their we pet. We had a guy on the podcast that had a pet coat. Seth Simpson. Seth Simpson. Yeah, Seth. Yeah, Seth. He's got a pet, pet Yeah, Seth, coat. and he had a badger, too. Badger, yeah. and he's had all sorts of shit. Yeah. Oh, that yeah. badger would be tough to have. Boy. Oh, my God, it's funny. I love watching his videos of them son of bitches. That, that coyote and that guy, dang, <laughs> he'd have them in the store, which I think they wind up taking them away from him because, you know, Everybody. Damn liberal shit. Oh, yeah, the game was bullshit. But, uh, yeah, they were cool. But, like, say, Tony Tebby and Tory Cook, that, all them guys, that's what they uh, they get their pet coyotes uh, that they film all, which which Tory, he has his coyotes, and they're free out in the woods. But, you know, mm -hmm. so he goes out in the woods and records them something. Oh, it's badass. So you want to get what, you a pet coyote? I'd love to have a pet coyote. I saw one? one that was mean as shit. It wasn't mean, but like yeah, that, you could tell. You got to get them. You got to fucking give them an attitude adjustment. You got to get them young, young, young uh, to where they, yeah, they hadn't been tainted. But this one was with just the in the bed with the guy. Huh? This one was just in the bed with the guy, and he'd oh, kind of yeah. like rough it up, and that mother, you could still see. Oh, it had yeah. some wild in him. It had some wild in it, and he'd have to kind of pop it a little bit. And like, Old man over bitch. at Electra, he had one, and didn't bother him a bit, but you didn't want to get near that. He had to have it caged up because really? it would eat you alive. I had a pet yeah. I had a pet bobcat for about seven days. Yeah. That's the dumbest shit I ever did in my life. So I asked, oh, uh, we asked, I asked Bucky and them this. How many coyotes do you think it would take to take a grown man down? You think six or less? Take a grown man down? Yeah. Depends how, Depends. how pissed off they are. Depends on what... what uh, the what guy, grown man the, too, the yeah. Man is. yeah, yeah. If you take, uh, you think you could take on? Yeah. Yeah. Ah! yeah, Do you or, think six would take you down? Oh yeah, well they very could. Yeah, I think six. Yeah, six. they wanted number. you. Two of them. They, two if, of them. Two of them could take you down if they wanted to. Oh fuck! They work you. They work your ass. Yeah, I guarantee. Oh, you. Just first, like them cows, they coming in there trying to get that that tendon over there. Oh right. Yeah, they get that fucking tendon. It's they go. Over. They go. If one, uh, if two coyotes, one of them jumps on your fucking chest and towards your throat and shit. Yeah. You're, you're, you're but how much? The, how much? What's the biggest one that you shot? Uh, 50, Fifty pounds. Pound. Yeah. Fifty, 50 pounder. Pound. Solid muscle. I, I'm not. I'm not disagreeing with you, but. I mean, I you fight some bitch. Out. That's like a guy with that mountain lion up in uh, Colorado here over here a while back. Right. He had the guy jump on him and. He choked the motherfucker out. <laughs> yeah. Well, a, that's a fucking fight. You know that. You goddamn, but you're fighting for your, your life. life that's right. you, you know, you, so, so six. So I thought I thought the number was hold six. On, let me get, probably I'm less. I'm going to put this to something Andy can understand. What's Lou weigh? He weighs 100 pounds. Okay. Can you fight Lou if you really, if, can you hold Lou down if he doesn't want to be held down? Uh, it's a, it's a rodeo. Yeah. Can you imagine having three that are 50 pounds? You trying to three different ones. Right. And you're not going to be able to focus on one yeah. because you've got to fight off the yeah. other two. And, and that's not like you can just hold one down. No. Like and that dog's not trying to bite you either. Well, he, yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's yeah. not really trying to, he's not trying to bite he's trying you. To, he's he not trying to hurt you. He's playing yeah. with you. Yeah. Them motherfuckers. You ever been bit by an animal? No, I don't think so. It's a fucking it, yeah, it hurts like a motherfucker, yeah. and it, I got bit by a dog when I was little. I, well, I used to have blue healers, and them that's, blue healers that's, will wear your ass yeah. out on the on the hills just like a cow. And like I say, enough of that shit's gonna take your ass down. Now, if I got a stick or something like that, yeah. you know the number's gonna go up. But just if I'm buried them, a cow man, dog will beat your eat your fucking ass, you boy. Damn right. And they try to get that tendon. They try uh -huh, to get your Achilles. Damn tendon. right. That's what. That's exactly why they're trying to do that cow. They're working her heel. Yeah, trying to just wear out and get you tired. You have 76 text messages you haven't checked? 
Uh, no, that's I don't know how that works. But. <laughs> that's a bunch of text <coughs> messages. Uh, God, <laughs> I was like, no, I, 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 no, I check, I check mine. Um, I was gonna show you this picture. Have you seen the the picture of the guy? He was changing, he was moving his. God damn it! I went to the wrong site. No, there it is. Um, he was moving his tree stand in Georgia, and a pack of wild dogs came they're, up. They're ten, and ten ate fold his worse. ass. They're tenfold worse than cows. We Fifteen had a, minutes, he finally found a stick and yep. was able to beat them off. But look at that shit. Yeah, we had a pack. Uh, I mean, like, I think it wound up killing thirty-eight of them. There was an old man, old man hacker over on Hacker Road had a uh, farm. Of course, he lived in Wichita, but he would always keep food out for these dogs, and you know they'd reproduce. And you know he had fucking like tons of dogs and right. they weren't in no cages they were just run wild there at his farm yeah but they didn't bother nothing because they were on a farm and they had food and they had water he died and when he died they got him got out. hell the, the ag teacher over there at uh uh i guess was the first guy that they killed his mule and then they killed a bunch of his show sheep because he had a bunch of shit right there they killed 11 of my yearlings and uh my my buddy was in there horseback i had him go over and check them cattle and they chased him out of there horseback. And uh, he had like, yes. I think he said there was 14 of them in that bunch. And I mean, there were chows, there were pits, there were, yeah, I felt bad one time. Because <laughs> we we went over there, of course, Sheriff's Department killed like nine. And so I was going to go over there and motherfucker, after they chased my buddy out of there, we will kill these motherfuckers. We, me and uh, some other guys went in there. And there's wheat field. And I put my collar out there, and I mean, we just barely turn that some bitch on. Here they come flying out of the deal. The dogs. Boom, 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 boom. We wind up killing like six then, and wind up killing like fourteen before it's over. With. We had a dog problem here this past fall. One dog. No, 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 no. Sweet as it, can it, be. At the end, of, at the end of the year, it was one. <laughs> it started out with more than that, and they got they yeah, got cows. Dogs. They got cows down here and Hell stuff. Yeah. They got but to be a pain in the butt. What I felt going back to what I felt bad about. Is ah, two, three weeks after we kind of waded through them, kind of rectified the problem. <laughs> I get out there and I got a dead yearling, and there's a blue healer sitting on top of that something. Motherfucker, one of them left. And I, boom, and I kill that no something. Shit. And I get out there and something like Buddy with a collar on his deal. He got old Buddy and I, I don't think it's him, but <laughs> <laughs> kind of felt bad. I, okay, let's take the old collar off. And, <laughs> You're by yourself in the woods a lot. A lot of creepy shit. Yeah. Listen, look at this picture right here. You can send that to me and I can put it on the big screen. Okay. Just airdrop it to the computer. Um, <clears throat> there was another thing that I was going to show you. It's talking about bad animals. Uh, there was a guy. He's a vet and he's on TikTok. Why is this not pulling up? Oh, there it is. Um, he's a vet and he's on TikTok and he got a mad ass fucking cat. And let me see if I can find just a regular old fucking house cat. And this thing is doing his damnedest to eat that fucking guy. Airdrop. Nobody found <clears throat> on my laptop. It says none. No people found. Look at this fucking cat. Uh-oh. Uh, where's my audio? TikTok. Oh, I love TikTok. Dude, Tick I, I'm TikTok is there. for guys that uh, slap their own. Why is this not working? I just emailed it to you. I texted it to you. I got a funny story that'll go just with this. <laughs> if it'll. Does that cat got duct tape on it? No. I don't know why I don't have sound, though. Well, I ain't even playing. There we go. Listen to that cocksucker. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's just an old house cat. Yeah. Imagine what Imagine two, two a... 40 pound cows. <laughs> Or a bobcat. Oh, hey, somebody fuck. eat your arm off, boy. He's trying his damnedest, and then, then they're about to shoot them, give him a shot. I gave him a shot with a twenty-two. I helped a vet a some mean in Wichita. motherfucker. And I used to help, and that was my job. I was the mitten guy. The guys that all had do doctor's degrees and shit, they didn't have to hold the cat. Well, finally, he just puts it in a chokehold. Look yeah. at it. it would look like welding gloves. <laughs> yeah. My buddy Stanley Britt, one time, he had a uh, piece of pipe about this big. God <laughs> almighty. <laughs> and it was about this big, and there were some baby kittens in it. And he said, hell, let's get them kittens. He said, well, motherfuckers, eat your ass. I said, ah, hell, go get you, daddy. Look, they just finally put the crate upside down and... 
chunk his <laughs> ass in there. <laughs> so he says, uh, he says, I'll go get my dad's welding gloves. His dad's welder, so he got gloves that look just like that. <laughs> and he's going to get them out of there one at a time. And those, of course, that pipe's about this tall, you know, just long enough for Stanley. Because we ain't about 16 years old. Oh, Stanley reaches down there and he grabs one of them cat. Uh, cat. Well, the other four crawl up that son bitch's arm. Oh. Ah! <laughs> you chewed his ass. Looks like that guy's leg. You said you emailed it to me, yeah, Jeff? Yeah, I texted you. Uh, Text me or email? I texted you. You're killing me here. I don't. Oh, there, there he is. Go. Okay, now, I'm going to get you the backstory on this. This guy, this is a from their ranch. Him and his daughter are hunting. They're walking through the woods. This is a picture from their game cam. They don't know who the third person is. Oh, that's him and his daughter. Yeah. I gotcha. And then that fella in the back. Yep. They don't know who that is. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah. That <laughs> kind of reminds me of the time I uh, uh, was deer hunting at, on, in a cemetery and I was on, I was sitting on James Earl Baker's uh, grave headstone. And this is an old cemetery in the middle of fucking nowhere. Yeah. You know, like a hundred grave cemetery. And I, when I got there, they didn't even have a fence around. The cows were eating all over. Right. I mean, big headstones and, and trees. And so I at least put a fence on. But there was a bunch of deer coming to the edge of this wheat field, and it's snow, and it's right before dark. And there's a light in that cemetery that you'll see at night, mm -hmm. and it'll float all the way around that some bitch. And then when you get there, you'll never find it. And, I mean, you can see it playing. Mexican Bill. Mexican uh, Bill. Oh, oh, he's Bill. Mexican, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, that, hell, man, he, he's worked with us forever. He does a plowing on Mexican Bill. He gets out there, and he's plowing last year. He said, hey, Clay, I'm no plow at this motherfucker no more. <laughs> <laughs> I said, why? That fucking cemetery is a lot. I said, oh, yeah. There's I said, everybody said, I don't know. No, if it's light, I plow. If it's not, not no, fuck, no, fuck that. So anyway, I, the whole time I'm sitting on James Earl Baker's headspone waiting on this big buck to come out, I'm thinking about that fucking light. And it's getting dark, it's getting, and getting close, and it's snowing really high and about you know foot of snow on the ground. Seemed like it. It probably wasn't an inch, but but it was it was snowing. And a bunch of deer come out there, and I got I got my gun sitting up on a tree that's right there, a big tree, and I said, and I've got them old glass, and I'm looking, there had been a bunch of does out there, but I'm waiting, and I'm almost running out of lights, fixing to be too late. And I'm looking, and there was no deer. Pew! A god dang doe had snuck oh, up behind no. me and was right behind me, and when she did, I threw them <laughs> fucking binoculars right up, knocked my goddamn gun over, grabbed my shit, and we was out of that fucking cemetery. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, did I ever tell you about the the, the orbs? Uh, me and Dwayne Elston uh -uh. for deer hunting. No, yeah, that was weird too. Dwayne thought I was crazy until he got up there with me. You think that's a ghost, or do you think that's a person? I think that is. A, oh, it looks like it's got a gun. Or yeah. a, I think that's a malfunction on the camera. Okay. Yeah. I, I don't. Would, would that fuck you with you if that was your camera and your and your daughter or you and one of the boys was hunting? Only a hundred percent. But I. I think you can kind of see through it. So, I mean, if you're going to go with that law, I'd say if I don't think it's a person is what I'm getting at. I sure think it looks like a person to me. No, I think it's either a, I think it's either a glitch in the camera or it would be a ghost. Okay. A but ghost. I don't think that that's a person. I would say ghost is what I'm guessing. Yeah. If somebody, yeah, if it was a person, you'd know it. Yeah. I think it's yeah, a ghost. Cause they're in some, I mean, you can, you can make them out easily. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's a ghost. Got to be a ghost. I think it's just a fuck There's up. a barn not far from here that a guy had on his game cam that they saw a ghost on it, and it's a uh, World War II guy. We uh, we were duck hunting down. We, we have ponds right below here. We were duck hunting there this winter, me and Lawson. I don't know if we told you this. I haven't heard this story. <clears throat> so um, him and I go down there, and we get the decoys and the blinds out, and we're going to come back up here to get our hunters. And it's just him and I pickups are off dead quiet and we hear a scream from the trees across the way mountain lion could he have been a mountain lion it was something or a lady got mutilated or a lady got mutilated but it was him and i and, and like we're both just kind of standing there and we're kind of getting the game plan wow. what we're gonna do next no it was a fucking wow. yeah 
Yeah, it fucking that mountain lion and is, wow. But Lawson had heard it, so I was getting tumbleweeds, and Lawson had heard it bef- when he was alone down there. Oh fuck! And he was like, "Did you put a fucking Lucky Duck e collar over there?" I'm like, motherfucker, you saw where I drove. Like, I haven't been over there. He's like, something just screamed. I said, you're fucking full of shit. And about that time, you fucking hear it again. It's like, that wasn't me, Lawson. <laughs> it wasn't where, me. Where, where was it at now? Rock on the bush? Yeah. Yeah, what had to have been. Like due west of here. I mean, due east, east of here. Straight east, yeah. Yeah, I, that doesn't surprise me. We've got a mountain but lion, he was a like, local one. That <laughs> he said, either seen. there's a mountain lion or somebody's getting killed over there. Yeah. Either way, I don't... I don't know which is he better. He will here. put the hair stand up on Fuck the back yeah, of your neck. I mean, it's and he was by himself. But and I was like, "You." He thought I did. He thought I was playing a trick. And then we both heard it together. And I was like, "We're good. Let's go get the guys." Yeah, wait till you get that UFO floating out there. Tell me this orb story. <clears throat> That's what it was, man. Man, Wayne, we've been seeing this big buck uh, there northwest of my house, and there's a big hill, and it's kind of open, and he'd been chasing them does in that open country. And uh, so I said, Dwayne, I said, I'll drop you off. And I dropped him off down there in the brush where there's a road. Road comes down and road so goes So you're a tag team in this deer yeah, was your plan. Yeah, we're trying. We're going to get this big son of a bitch. So I drop him off down there. It's, you know, like 4.30 in the morning, 5 o'clock in the morning. Drop him off. And then I come back up there, and I'm going to get up top of the hill. So I'll be able to see all this, and he'll be able to see if he comes down that road. So I get over there, and, uh, well, my house that I live in right now, we didn't own it at that time. So there was another guy, another buddy of mine that stayed down there. But the brush is just so thick you can't even see the house. And they don't have any outside lights like a floodlight or anything like that. So when I get up there on the uh, side, top of that hill, uh, about oh, probably a mile and a half uh, southwest or southeast of me is that house. Of course, like I say, you can't see it, it, the house at all. Cause of the tree. And, uh, so I look over there and by the time I get set down, I look over there and there's this orange light, like an orb, you know, and it's way higher than the trees. And I'm trying to figure out what it is in my Trying mind. to rationally figure yeah, out what they Yeah, and I go, what the fuck is that? I said, one, my buddy Sean is not going to get up because it's just like a Sunday morning and he drunk all night last <laughs> night before. And I was like, but then I was like, but hell, it can't be nothing. And it was big, bright, goddamn orange orb. And like a big spotlight. So I thought, well, maybe maybe he's standing up on a gooseneck trailer or something. No, he ain't going to be standing up on a gooseneck. Well, then all of a sudden, that orb go, goes down. And then it goes back up. It goes down to the tree line, then it goes back up. And then it gets real small and just shrinks inside of itself. Now I'm going... What the fuck? I called old Dwayne. Hey, Dwayne, did you see that fucking uh, bright light back behind you? He goes, what light? And I tell him what happened. He goes, come get me. <laughs> 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 so I run down there, come get me. I come get me. He goes, what the fuck? It was one of them, what you talking about, Willis? What you talking about? And, and this is the buddy of mine that I call the shrub because his family tree was a shrub. Yeah. So I go pick up the shrub, me and the shrub get up there to dig up. Then we're sitting up on top of the hill together so we can protect each other from <laughs> aliens. And he goes, are you sure? And I said, Fuck, motherfucker, I know what the hell. I said, you don't see something that's down there right now? Because he's like, well, that right. maybe is a flood light, a street light. And there ain't no more kind of street light. I've been down there my whole oh, goddamn night. And he goes, all right, well, let's fucking worry about this deer. So we're sitting there about that deer, and all of a sudden. There it is again. Where it is down there to, to the southwest. Straight west of where he just come from, where it falls off into a bottom, and there's a uh, creek runs along there. That goddamn orange orb shows up down along that creek, and it rolls all the way down them trees right above them goddamn creek, and then it comes back, and then it goes up, and then it shrinks up, and then it's gone. And we're in the middle of fucking nowhere. There ain't nothing north of Lake Kickapoo, you know. Don't know what it was. So he believed you then after he oh, saw it. Oh, yeah, that. he's sitting there beside me. <laughs> there it what is. What the fuck is that? It can't be a helicopter. <laughs> You'd hear it. Because there ain't a dead. I said, that motherfucking goddamn alien, man. Have you seen that yeah, picture? Yeah, because the same kind of deal. Yeah. That's Photoshop deal there. Is it? Yeah, that's been debunked. Oh. Yeah, that's been around for What about this one? Forever. Same with that one to the left. The Skinwalker? Yeah. Yeah, what a bunch fuck. of that shit. Let me All tell you. Fact. I'll tell you a story. We went to... <clears throat> Back before I, 
The Got- black cat. You see that black cat yeah. up there? I got to tell you a story about that while before I forget about it. <laughs> this is funny as shit. During my Kyle Today deal, I pulled down there uh, over here off 368, and I pulled down there, and, uh, it, it, you know, it's the, the the highway is elevated from where I pulled off, and I walk out to a gate of the wheat field. I'm looking to the west. Kyle comes. Well, he hangs up out there about 300 yards, so I got my Zoom tied up real good. Boom. Drop it. Oh. Kyle. So I turn and look, see if anything else is coming. And I look on the highway back behind me, and there's a goddamn mountain lion stalking me. What? This son. Of a bitch. <laughs> this mother- when was this? Yeah, this is in back- your cow today. Yeah, my cow. Coy- he is stalking my ass. I go, holy shit. And he's like 30 yards from me. He's on the highway, and I'm right off the old shoulder. <gasps> holy shit. So boom. I shoot his ass. Kill me a fucking mountain lion and then kill me a mountain lion. I've been wanting to kill a mountain lion. I killed me a fucking mountain lion. <laughs> Somebody's house cat. <laughs> fucking, I'm in the middle of nowhere, man. <laughs> there ain't a house within five miles of me. And I get up there. Well, I had that zoom pulled oh, up on oh, with a side fire. And that long t- and it was a black cat looked just like <laughs> and that sub bitch was stalking me too, because I was <laughs> I was running a, a bird. Uh-huh. Uh, nutty and that that some bitch is talking. Like, oh shit! Oh, oh, shit. There he is. Yeah. Like, um. Sorry, my bad. <laughs> Tucker Tucker Carlson. He was doing an interview not too long ago, not on his show, but he said there have been a hundred servicemen that have gotten killed uh, by aliens. Uh, at like he said, all of these happen at uh, like nuclear reactor places. So you see a lot of like if ships are carrying nukes and places that have nukes. There's a lot of UFO activity, and he said there have been a hunt, and they 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 they've got court. It's documented, like it has happened. Servicemen have died, and they've all died with a severe blow to the head, and that's how they all and like everybody's reporting these things that are no landing. Reason not join the service on these <laughs> on these uh, nuclear reactor sites because um, they said when we started seeing a big increase in UFO activity was when, after uh, we nuked Nagasaki and Hiroshima. And they think that these aliens are coming back. Like, listen, motherfuckers, you're only going to get this planet. And if you fuck this up, you ain't coming with us. So there's a lot of activity going on at nuclear reactor sites. And a lot of goddamn shit going on about UFOs all over nowadays. Yeah. They're everywhere. And people are, and it's becoming more of a, uh, <clears throat> People aren't scared of them. People, yeah. are, you know, back in the seventies, people were scared. Oh yeah, that yeah, was a big deal. Our fifties when they <laughs> had the I've, high, I've, or, uh, Roswell. Yeah. yeah, I've told this story before on here, but I have a buddy of mine that works for the company, and he's a CIA guy, and he told me this thirty years ago. He told me he said, "Jeff, I'm telling you right now," and he's in the know on some things, and he got to read a lot of redacted or unredacted paperwork that was declassified when Clinton was office. I'm sure there's going to be some guys with suits come to my door. I keep telling this. He <laughs> said that the people on the milk cartons that used to have, he goes, a lot of them people that are fucking missing, he said, they've been a fucking abducted. He said, I'm yeah. telling you right now. He goes, there, yeah, there's more to this shit than people realize. Oh, yeah. And this is a guy that I believe. He has no reason to lie to him. He's not a bullshitter. So I, I really believe him. I got a buddy of mine that is at Jacksboro. He was deer hunting at a place. He's in a deer stand, and he sees something. He said, like a cigar-shaped fucking deal goes by. And he goes, just right there by him. He said, I'm talking two or 300 yards went over the hill right there and never seen it again. Now, this is where the story gets really fucking weird. And if you knew this guy, and you may know him, and when we're off deal, I'll ask you if you know him. You may know him. He's a real nice guy. He's not a bullshitter. He's not the kind of guy that bullshits. I've never known him to even tell a joke. He's just not that kind of person. But he told me this story. He's played poker with him all the time. He told me that while he's sitting in his deer stand, some little fuckers come by with some little fucking suits on, some weird-looking fuckers, walked right by him, went over the hill. He said, I went and got my fucking truck and got the fuck out of there. He said, I went to the Dairy Queen in Jacksboro and got me a hamburger and a cup of tea trying to figure out what I seen. <laughs> and he said, a bunch of blue <coughs> Shepherd Air Force bugs trucks were there coming in there. He goes, well, what are y'all doing here in Jacksboro? He said, oh, we're, we're, we're looking for a, a site. He said, a crash site or something? Somebody crashed? Did you see something? No, I'm just curious what you're doing here. No, we're just doing some investigations down here. He said, you can take it for what you want. He goes, that's all I can tell you I saw. But he's not the guy I would not. I, I, and I've been to this place he hunted before. 
I mean, and I he, but he's not the like. If I told this story, it's me like fucking oh, just yeah. bullshitting somebody. Yeah, goddamn yeah, Jeff, you never tell that story yeah. because everybody thinks they're fucking yeah. crazy. Wayney Hutchinson. If yeah. Wayney told you this story, you'd believe Wayney. Because yeah. have you ever known Wayney to, to nah. bullshit or not? No, no, nah, I can say he's not gonna bullshit. No, him. and that's the way this guy right. is the same kind of person. So you know, so I, have I, you ever I, seen the deal about Richard Nixon uh, and, J- and Jackie, Jackie Gleason? Gleason? Yeah, yeah, I just that's, listened to that podcast the other that's day. Pretty wild. Yeah, and Jackie Gleason divorced his wife over it. Yeah, because she told yeah. the, the National Enquirer or something about it. Um, why, why would Jackie call Gleason? him up? Years ago, the U.S. Yeah. government reached out to me because I'm an expert on head injuries, on brain injuries, traumatic brain injury, as a physician, and they had all these. He's a doctor. Family. No, he said a guy reached oh, out okay, to me okay, okay, okay. wanting to be on the Tucker Carlson show. He worked for the government. Okay. Over 100 who'd been killed by UFOs. And the Department of Defense was refusing to give them death benefits or medical benefits. And I was like, there are over 100 servicemen killed by UFOs? Like, what? He's like, no. And there are court cases about it. I'm like, why isn't this on the front page of the news? I don't know. But he goes, I'm involved in it. I'm, the, you know, I'm one of the researchers and expert witness in these cases. Bullshit. What does that mean? This is all totally real. This is not... This is the Department of Defense, dude! But that's not the clip that I saw, but he was talking about where all these deaths occurred and, like, every one of them was at a nuclear nuclear site. Well, that's like all them cow mutil- cattle mutilations yeah. and shit, man. Crop circles, can, all yeah, kinds of shit. Yeah, there's all kinds of shit we can't explain. And, and that's like I seen the deal the other day. It was pretty wild of, of a ruin that they uncovered all that, and it had a a spaceship, a spaceship with a guy in a spacesuit inside the son of a gun. Mm-hmm. And this was like from the 1500s. Thousands. Yeah. Or yeah. Something. yeah. I think, uh, there, there are a lot of those hieroglyphs. Like there's a lot of shit on there. Years, like, you know, they paid attention to the sky back then. Yeah. So, I mean, there's no telling what they saw, but, but I don't know. Um, how would you think one though, of the, one of the theories hmm. is because we've talked about this, like there's been a lot of there, we're not the most ex- advanced civilization that there's ever been. There's been there's plenty of history that human beings have reached a certain point of uh, sophistication, and then that history becomes erased. So one of the theories is that humans figured out how to leave this planet, and that the pe- the the aliens that are coming back are descendants of those people. Now that could be you know you think all that, horseshit now, <laughs> and it probably is all horseshit. But that is one of the theories. The Mayans had. Air flight. You can go in some of their hieroglyphics or whatever, and they've got a man in like a balloons and air machine or a, a, a plane of some sort. Well, they wouldn't draw something like that up there unless it worked. I mean, it's not like the Jetsons, right, like in the yeah. '60s when we had cartoons. Somebody somewhere in in when George Washington was here, they weren't drawing pictures of an airplane because they didn't know they existed. They didn't know nothing about flight. But for some reason, a hundred years, a thousand years before that, when the Mayan civilization get wiped out, uh, wouldn't it would have been when the Spaniards came over? Did I, they I, die in all that? Thirteen hundreds, the thousands. I mean, what was it? I wonder what the eight, what, what years that took place in. Uh, shit, because the Mayan calendar ran out a couple of years ago. Oh no, they were okay. Mayans existed between twenty six hundred BC and eighteen hundred BC. So eighteen hundred years. So two thousand years ago. Yeah. So so two thousand years ago. Well, longer than that. Well, but I'm giving the last. If it was eighteen hundred, be four thousand years ago. Eighteen hundred, and it's two thousand right now. So it goes been, eighteen, seventeen, sixteen, fifteen. Yes. Eighteen. And we're at two thousand now. Yeah. No. 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 That's no. four thousand years ago. Do what? It's four thousand years ago. Yeah, I guess you would be right. Never mind then. Uh, I'm man, losing my damn mind. Man. Yeah, it is four thousand. Yeah. So four thousand to five forty five hundred years <clears throat> even. Anyways, four thousand years ago, they have drawings and stuff, and they lined up those damn Mayan, the Chichen and stuff. Those temples down there are lined up to exactly one one hundredth, and the moon comes in at a certain deal and lights everything up. Something happened. For us to become dumb fuckers all of a sudden. Yeah. Did just the dumb people start having kids? I mean, something happened. Yeah. Yeah. And and, and yeah. it doesn't make sense that, you know, it's kind of like your Bigfoot story on around Dundee and stuff. And believe it or not, I've had some people since that podcast that has said they've seen something in that area. 
yeah. that have come out and they said, well, fuck if Clay will tell you you've done that shit. Yeah. One guy's exact words were, listen, I'm not a bad motherfucker like Clay. If Clay can fucking tell people that and he ain't had to worry about having his ass whooped, I'm going to tell him, listen, if you're going to whoop my ass and call me crazy, you got to go whoop Clay first. But I've had other people reach out that have said they've seen something there too. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah, that's you know, when somebody finally, like me, I, I can give two shits. Everybody think I'm stupid anyway. But, <laughs> so, but then a lot of other guys like, well, I'm going to tell you. They, I've got to They hear, get you by like, yourself. Yeah, well, I'm going to tell you. I said, I never told anybody. Like that <laughs> one buddy of mine that told you that with the guides, you know, there was 12 of them out there on that deal, and they seen that deal. And, yeah. It, it's a lot of unexplained. And <clears throat> it's unexplained. We, we, we live in northwest Texas, basically, north central. I don't know what you call it, but north Texas. We don't have a lot of areas that aren't un- unexplored. But there's a lot of places that don't have a lot of traffic still. Yeah. You go to Montana or Wyoming, there's places that don't see a grown man for a couple of years sometimes. Yeah. Now, there's not very many of them places here, and you still have you things. Even in East Texas, though, you got such thick yeah. shit that ain't, there is, you know, and same with uh, Missouri. You get in them big fucking real tree places. Yes. So that, yeah, it's. In southern Louisiana, Easy to the hide. swamps you can hide. Yeah, but people will go there. Go there. You go to some places in Montana and Wyoming, and you uh, know there hadn't been nobody there since the Indians have been yeah. there. Some places, but in North Texas, it's not hard to find a place like that. Even mm-hmm. the big ass Wagner Ranch has had a man f- foot over it. Yeah, you know, and it happens. Someone's on a. You're, there's some places on the Wagner Ranch that you could probably go that won't have a man step on it for a year. Yeah. But that's not. It's half million acres. Yeah, and you still though. In our area, have things like this Bigfoot sighting that y'all saw or heard, and other people have seen this stuff. Yeah, and there's more of that shit goes on in places, but people are afraid to say it. Oh yeah, because everybody call them retard or stupid son well, of a bitch. With all the game cams, doesn't it make sense though? You would think somebody would see something, but then again, we got a mountain lion right now around Knox County that a good friend of mine has had it on his game cam twice. Yeah, another person out here has seen it. And I'm not mentioning any names because I was told not to say nothing. They did. They, they told me it's like Jeff. I want to tell you this, but you got a big fucking mouth on a podcast, so you can't tell nobody. But you would think that all the game cams in our area and all the deer leases, it would come up more, and it's been on one game cam. Yeah, we got one rolling over there in my country, and I I, I was out every night last year hunting. You'd think I'd run. Hell, the other day in the middle of the day, he walked right through there. The one day he walked right through on Turtle Creek Road, and then the next day he walked through there and gets that guy's dog, and right there in the middle of the day. And what that, are we talking about? A mountain line. Line. I went out that night. Yeah, I gotta get a pistol. <laughs> yeah, because I I got up on a deal, and I and he got a buddy of mine's dog years before, five or six years ago too. If it's the same get line, it may yeah, be different. Yeah, oh yeah, there's but uh, in the same general pot, and I got on him. But I didn't have my gun off my back before I turned the collar on, blah, blah, blah. And he went off. But I went there the other night. I went to that same spot because it's a big ridge and I can see forever and it's right where they – but I guarantee you I got the heebie-jeebies because, <laughs> yeah, all I could think about, you know, I had a rifle. Yeah. But y'all y'all seen the uh, the picture of the guy where they found the uh, hunter up in Alaska – you know, his skeletal remains yeah, and the bear rifle. remains and the, oh, and the, and the yes. gun with the shot, yes. one shot at it. I was like, man, I might need a. That's why I always want to carry that. I got a big old Bowie knife, and everybody's, why do you carry that Bowie knife? I said, if I get a bind, I got something to defend myself. <laughs> Have you ever been to bear country? Uh, Not really. <laughs> I was in Alaska. Me and my dad were a long, long time ago, and – um. The shitter behind the we went on we did a really cool situation. We went on a hunt up there where you got they flew you from Fairbanks to this place called the Minnow Flats and they just dropped us off up there. And we had duck decoys. We had a the, we stayed in basically a Morgan building that had a wood burning stove on it that yeah. you could also cook on. And we had uh it had it was a double Morgan building. The back room had four bunks in it, and you could sleep you could sleep six people. But we would stay out there, but the shitter was behind it. So you had to walk like 30 yards to shit. In grizzly bear country. Oh, yeah. I peed off the porch at nighttime. But during <laughs> yeah, the day, right. I'd go down there. But I would take a gun with me when you take a shit, and I'd shoot grouse. They'd come off the trees. Yeah. They'd come land up. But when you walk through that stick shit, and then you see a bear's fucking paws and how big them fuckers are. They are. <clears throat> if they wanted to kill you, you ain't nothing you can do. I got a buddy of mine that lives up there right now. Pisses me off, too. Uh, Ray is his name. And some gun, he, uh, for... 15 you know for forever he's trying to get me to go up there bow hunting with him bear hunting he goes up there every year 
nine hours north of Anchorage, Alaska, in the middle of fucking nowhere, and we go bow hunt with a, a bear. And we're not talking baby bears either. <laughs> 20, you know, grizzly bears. And I said, fuck that. I said, you know, I've always told everybody, I said, Indians are eating government cheese because they've got them bows and arrows. And I said, I don't fuck. If I use a goddamn smoke pole, I'm using a smoke pole. I said, God dang right. I said, I'm out I've on never it. Heard uh, that. I've never I, heard I'm that. I'm out on that bullshit. So <laughs> bows and the motherfuckers, yeah. them sticks, they don't, they don't, they don't work real well. Cheese. I I said, so uh, so he kept trying to get me to go up there. And then finally, and he said, man, what's cool? He said, there's an island up there. He said uh, uh, that he'd been wanting to buy. And he said, man, it's badass. And they had, it was an old lodge, hunting lodge and all that. So it had the buildings and everything on it or something like that. But And he'd been trying to get this old man to do it. He wouldn't sell it, wouldn't sell it. And he finally, one day out of the blue, that old man calls him and says, hey, you still want to buy my island? He goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, well, I'm going to sell it. He goes, well, what changed your mind? He said, well, so I'm getting older. My daughters want me to move back to Minnesota, blah, blah, blah. So he bought this goddamn island. Well, goddamn, after he buys the island, some bitch gets a brain turn and been fighting that some bitch for the last 10 years. Mm, and uh, so he, he never got to go to the island. So I got thinking about it one day. I wonder if that motherfucker sell that some bitch. <laughs> and I said, not that I can buy it, but I, I got a friend of mine that might buy it. And be interested to buy it. And, and I can go visit. And he'll let me and, go. Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> and uh, so... And uh, so I said, hey, man, you want to sell that island? He goes, well, as a matter of fact, I am. He said, but as you know, I've been fighting a death, and I hadn't been up there, so I'm going to go up there. This was like last June. He said, when I get back, I'll holler at you. I said, all right. Well, I didn't hear from it, didn't hear from it, didn't hear from it. And finally, I see him message, hey, you still going to sell that damn island? He goes, well, we decided not to. He wound up moving up there and said, fuck it. <laughs> he ain't come back. That's why he ain't ever called me. He, said, he ain't ever come back. And he's living up there. He's sending me goddamn photos of the wolves. You should wolves. go visit it. Well, huh? You should go visit him. Oh, I will. Yeah, if I can ever get caught up around this summer, I may go visit his ass. Yeah, because I got several friends in Alaska now that uh, that I can go visit. And I want to go. I would love to road trip from here to there. Well, see, I that's would. what I was going to do on that Alaskan uh, marathon. Triathlon. Yeah, that might yeah. Well, that was another fucking story. <laughs> <laughs> you talking about a crackhead something. I'm sitting on my couch on August 6th, and a deal pops up on their uh, Alaskan triathlon. You know, anybody that don't know anything about an Ironman triathlon, you got to run, or you got to swim 2.4 miles, mm -hmm. then you got to uh, bike 112 miles, and, it's a and then you got to run 26.2 miles, and you got 17 hours to do it all. And uh, I'm sitting on the couch. And this is right in the middle of a coyote a day kind of deal. But this how I'm a guy that feels like he's got to push himself all the time. I've got to have a task. I've got to have something to keep me busy and really become glaring obvious after I turned 50. I felt like I'm running out of time. Yeah. So I sit there. I said, shit, I'm going to do that. I'm 50 fucking six years old. Fat <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> I called him up. Yeah, I, wanna, I paid a thousand dollar entry fee, entered that some bitch, and then I got to get a hundred dollar goddamn uh, uh, membership, mm -hmm. and then I got to go down there to Endurance House and buy a goddamn thirty five hundred goddamn dollar bike, four thousand dollar bike and accessory, and then they canceled the son of a bitch. Um, I ran for the first time a couple days ago, and I made it a mile. Ran a mile, but I broke that son of a bitch up. I'd run a lap and I'd walk a hundred. Now I'd run a lap. The first fucking two hundred meters, I thought I was gonna die. My goddamn hamstrings and my calves, thinking motherfucker. And Clay just hops off the fucking couch and just does this, yeah, half yeah. marathon bullshit. Yeah, it, it. No, I did a whole marathon. Well, that's right. Yeah, that's 26. right. Twenty six point two. Twenty six point two miles. But like my fucking lungs were hurting, and I mean I work out every year. After hunting season, but it's like weights and shit like that. I know I don't ever yeah. just go out and run. And let me tell you, it. Well, it's, it's I can weird tell that now. I've got air, like, and according to my doctor, that ain't normal <laughs> because I, you know, remember during the Viagra, yeah, you know all that. Though, you know, that's what he told me. He said, uh, "You train in the mountains." I said, almost none. I ain't even been to my I said, I live in Flatland City. I said, what are you talking about? He said, my oxygen levels in my blood are comparable to an athlete that really? trains in the mountains. And I said, is that good? He goes, oh, that's absolutely good. 
And I've never, I said, well, then maybe that has something to do with me never having a cramp in my life. Could and, be. Uh, Could be why you're hairless. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that, and that too, I told him about that. But. So, so did you ever do the 2.4 mile swim? No, but I did jump off of it and I did a, cause it's a one point, one point, uh, four around my island at my deal. And I swam it, jumped off the couch. I said, well, let's go try. <laughs> Not the smartest fucking thing in the world. Cause I didn't even take a, uh, life jacket. Life jacket or nothing. <laughs> that. But I swim like a fucking fish. You and do? I, I, oh yeah. I swim like a fish. We used to play a game, grew up at Iowa park that they had that irrigation ditch that run behind the uh, Bradford Elementary. On a summer day, there'd be 50 fucking kids out there, mm -hmm. and we played underwater tag. And underwater tag was fun until a big son bitch named Calvin Sampley showed up. Calvin, was, he's a good motherfucker. I mean, wouldn't, wouldn't hurt nobody, but he would drown you for a little bit. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, because he was about four years older than us. He was always cool. He was always badass. Him and his brother both. But, but when Calvin... Tagged you, he drowned you. You know, it wasn't that tag you're in. Yeah. Oh, ah, ah. <laughs> you ain't going to laugh. So we didn't want to get tagged by uh, uh, Calvin. So we got to where we could swim for days underwater and swim like fish. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you a funny thing that happened up there. My buddy Stanley that I was talking about earlier, we was up there one day and we was in, you know, the weeds are growing out over the day. I know Stanley was up there. Where's he at? Where's he at? I don't know. He's here somewhere. And all of a sudden, something bumped into <laughs> Stanley, and Stanley pushed off that son of a bitch, thinking it was Neil. It was a big old black dead cow that had been oh. swallowed up, and old Stanley's leg went inside that God. deal of maggots filled. All right, everybody out. <laughs> oh, God, that would be nasty as shit. What was, uh, that? Uh, what, was, what was the... I want you to tell an old story just because I like it. Uh, a long time. Hold on. Before we get off, of it, have you heard the Grizzly Man audio where he's getting oh my eaten God. alive? Yeah. Ooh. And That's, I guess his girlfriend I turned on the, yeah. she turned on the camera somehow. Yeah. And right before she got ate, but mother. That fuck. bitch ended up being bear shit. Both I, of them I, did. Did you ever watch that documentary? No, but I oh heard. Oh, my God. The, the greatest documentary. The, the fuck, he's just a fucking. No, man. you got to watch. The best is the uh, plane driver interview. Why? What? What's the plane driver say? Well, the plane guy that used to drop him off over there all the time said, "I'll never see you again." You know, they were every now and then. They, he'd tell him, he said, "You know, oh, uh, Treadwell, oh Timothy thought them some bitches were teddy bears. They're fucking bears." <laughs> he yeah. said, "They're not." He said, "They'll eat you." Play dead. Sound like me and Kelly last night. <laughs> <laughs> Play dead. Don't be stupid is the first thing. I learned that lesson with that little bobcat. So I don't know She's a dumbass for staying there. I, but yeah. I don't have Bear's to got outrun you. Yeah. I, I'll run yeah. you. Tim, um, Timothy, I'll make sure you never. So, but. Clay. Mm. T t t tell the story about you get the guy reading the newspapers, that guy. Reading the it. guy, the guy you set alive on fire. Oh yeah, yeah, that was right down the road. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right over here. Yeah, we had to, I'm trying to think of his damn name. I I probably won't throw redheaded him kid. Yeah, uh, God dang it. Anyway, we we worked for Dean Drilling. Matter of fact, old Carl Dean passed two weeks ago. Good son of a bitch. We worked there drilling, and we were right down here on the river. What river is that? Brazos. The Brazos, yeah. We were right there on the north side of the Brazos on old Bradley's place, I think it is. And uh, I think then it was Used Livingston. to be the Lee Smith Ranch. Or yeah, the Livingston? I think Livingston had it at the time. May have had it just Lee. <laughs> it's, no, Lee, Livingston had a bunch of that. So you cross the river, now. you're on the right. Okay, that, yeah. that's the Lee Smith. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We go down in there a while. Well, we're far enough away from Archer City, we was going to camp out down there. And uh, well, we wasn't, and uh, but but the morning tire crew, which was Todd Kenneman and these other two guys, well, we were the daylight crew, so when it got daylight, we come in, we relieve them guys. Well, they had them a tent set up out there, and they had that old tent set up, and you know, they're going to, and old Todd he went in there and he'd go to sleep. Well, we was out there and we start making connection, and all that, and then all of a sudden, I come back in time, I make connection, mix a little bit of mud, I come up there in the doghouse, which. For anybody that doesn't know what a doghouse is, it's kind of where you put your lockers and you got a heater. It's kind of a, like a, a portable shelter for a rig, you know, for everybody there. You know, you change your clothes, whatever. You got your log book, 
anyway, and there was a bench in there that you put stuff in. Well, that bench, I get up there, and uh, God dang, I damn near had his name. <laughs> uh, well, anyway, he's and he looked a lot like Timothy Treadwell. Timothy had, Treadwell. That kind of, had that kind of hairdo. Well, he's uh, <laughs> Kenny. That's his name, Kenny. I won't say his last name. Kenny I'm still not, don't like yeah. you. Yeah, oh, Kenny, he's laying on that dang um, <laughs> deal, and he's got his head propped up the back back into the doghouse. There's guys old feet, you know, crossed together. He's still got it. He's fully clothed. Guys, old uh, red wing boots on. Why? Well, I said, that motherfucker. He'll be sleeping on my goddamn lounging spot. That's where I <laughs> land my deal. I said, he can go out there in my goddamn tent and get his own sleep. So I get me some black tape. And I mean, it's so much as sleep. And I take that black <laughs> tape and I wrap them feet that are crossed. <laughs> I wrap them together. So, so I wrap them together, wrap them together, get them good and wrapped together. And then I get newspaper because I read the newspaper religiously every morning when the newspaper actually had something besides yeah. bullshit. And uh, so I take that newspaper and I spread it all over him, man. I mean, what was that gal's name? Joan of Arc? Yeah. yeah I am playing. <laughs> I am fixing to sacrifice him to the. And I got all that shit up on that summit. And he's sleeping there. And, and uh, you know, the bit where he's laying on the bench. Right across from it is a heater, you know, like a propane heater, you know, pipe made out of pipe. I get on that pipe, and I'm sitting on that pipe, and, you know, there's very little room in between it. And I get my lighter out, and I go, chick whoosh chick whoosh chick whoosh And I light all that newspaper on, and it gets big, and it gets bigger, <laughs> and I go, this motherfucker's going to roast. <laughs> Somebody said he's going to wake up. So I finally, I kick him in the boot. Uh, well, when it, it took him a minute, but when his eyes come open, I mean, I, I wish we had Snapchat back then. This would have fucking been, I'd have made a lot of money because that motherfucker's eyes got that goddamn big. I mean, he turned into fucking Bruce Lee in a car. He's kicking, but then he goes to get up and he falls off the deal. Well, when he falls off the deal, he falls on top of all that goddamn paper, fire. which is on fire. And he's trying to get away, but he can't because his boots are tied together, taped together. Finally, he breaks loose of that deal. And the first thing he does is punch me right in the mouth. I'm laughing so hard I could give two shit. It was worth every bit of that punch in the mouth. He goes, man, you know I was burnt. As a, he got burned as a child. And, and, you know, he burned up, got scars all over himself. So he was petrified of fire. And, you know I don't like fire. I got burned as a child. I said, well, quit fucking sleeping on my goddamn bed. Go out there sleeping in your goddamn tent. So he gets mad. He goes out there, and then they, we got to go out there and make a goddamn connection. And we can go out there and roll popping. I'll kiss your ass, son of a bitch. Don't go in there and fall asleep again. I got to do it again. <laughs> and he gets a he roast him again, and he said, I quit. I fired this. I was like, You sorry, motherfuckers. He took off walking. Well, you know how far it is from there to. It's a long knock, way to knock snot everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Well, we're two miles back in there. And, uh, well, about two hours later, he come walking back. But the first time he got back to Archer City, he never showed back up on rig <laughs> one for Dean Drilling until after I left, which is about 10 years later, he went back to work for him. But, oh, Kenny. Yeah. <laughs> you, 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 you know I don't like fire. I, I was burned as a child. <laughs> this uh, yeah. I'll tell you what. He fuck around with us at the deal. We were, we were ruthless. A worse one is, uh, y'all remember the shit story? We're, we're out there, we're making connection, and uh, we had me and, and it's Kim's brother, Jeff. Yeah, Jeff. Yeah, I know Jeff and Steve. Steve I love Rodrigo. Jeff Marnie stories. Oh, goddamn Jeff. That's something. We're sitting there, and we was always fucking with each other 24-7, whether it was him or us back and forth. But, oh, Jeff, this was the greatest one. Oh, Jeff. No, he, this ain't the greatest one, Jeff's. Well, yeah, the BB gun. The BB gun is the best. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, oh, Jeff, was, uh, this was pretty close, though. I, <laughs> I mean, I laughed till I fucking hurt. Jeff is the outside hand. I'm the chain hand. Steve's the driller. <clears throat> so we go to make a connection. We were tripping pipe. And all of a sudden, old Steve goes, hey, put on the Kelly. Let's circulate. I got to go take a shit. So we, we put the Kelly on there to make it up. He starts circulating. Well, while he's out there taking shit, I'm getting my chain out ready, and Jeff rolls up a deal of a pipe over there. When Jeff's leaning up against Derek, waiting on Steve to show up. Well, Steve come walking up the catwalk up there, and he's got this rag in his hand. And old Jeff goes, 
we got in a rag. And he had went out there and he shit in that rag on top of that rag. And then he went, when Jeff said that, he went. <laughs> and he and he threw that goddamn pile of shit at fucking Jeff. And when it hit Jeff, it hit him right below the chest, right in the chest. And when it did, it blowed up all over his fucking face. And immediately his first reaction is to take off that shirt. So he pulls that shirt off, smears all that fucking shit up his nose and all over the fucking nose. And I mean, it is instant fucking puke. Steve goes laughing so fucking hard and he gets whiff of it because it's his own shit. They're both of them look like two little pump jacks. And I'm laughing so goddamn hard I can't see straight. And so anyway, Jeff immediately, he's running. He gets in out there in the uh, sample barrel and he's wiping all the shit off of it. While he's out there, in the meantime, there was one of them little turds that was still left on the rig floor. And I got me a stick, and I put that old stick, and I smeared it all over them tong handles. Boy, finally, <laughs> finally old Jeff come back up there, and he goes, man, that was a bunch of bullshit, man. That's a little bit over the top. <laughs> still got it. <laughs> you, you don't play that shit. You don't play with shit. <laughs> <laughs> you don't play with shit. <laughs> and uh, fucking about that time. And Steve goes, just, just go on to goddamn Kelly and break it from each other. So we come over there and he goes, put them tongs, he grabs them tongs, it oozes through his fingers, and here we go again. <laughs> <laughs> God, I tell you. you can tell the BB I tell story you what, did. you have a lot of fun with fucking turd. I'm telling you, I mean, yeah, that, that, good. you know, you, you see all them uh, uh, videos of people dying in a stampede. Yeah, I figured out how people die in a stampede. I couldn't ever figure out how they die. But one day, over at Jeff and Steve's house, they lived together. They were roommates. But their shitter was broke. Mm -hmm. So he had to go uh, out in the garage and, and shit in a uh, honey bucket. <laughs> and so, and we're watching the Dallas Cowboys play the uh, San Francisco 49ers. And we got their big party. So living room is full of fucking people. <laughs> you got his shit outside. <laughs> so I go, I go out there. I go out there and take me a shit. Well, my shit back then, for me, it's like a, a, a Louisville slugger bat. You know, that fucking <laughs> hard as rock. Man, I'll fuck with some people with this. So I got me a stick and I stuck it down. <laughs> and I've got this big old fucking turd that's about that fucking big around on a set of sticks. And when I come in that front fucking doorway, you talk about 30 people trying to get through a doorway <laughs> this big. That's how people die no. in a fucking stand. They went to crawling up on each other like fucking hogs. <laughs> ah! And the funniest part when they all, I had them scattered all over the fucking neighborhood, you know, and over there. Well, Jewel was a city cop back then, and somebody had called. They got a disturbance. There's something going on. Over, and all of a sudden, <laughs> man I'm, with a I'm turd out there in the middle stick. of the fucking doo doo on a stick in the middle of the road. And, uh, and old Jewel rolls up and he goes, Hey, uh, I got a disturbance call. Now, what's going on over there? I thought, Jewel, I said, I'm chasing everybody around with this doo doo on a stick. <laughs> 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 Tell, tell the BB story. I oh, love that too. baby gun, that I, motherfucker. Oh. I still feel bad for this Oh, God. Guy. Oh, uh, yeah, oh, they, they had old Jeff. With Jeff, you could tell. Does when he, he still was, speak to you? Huh? Does he still speak to you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He don't give a fuck. He, he's like me. He has no shame. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, But uh, but old Jeff, that son of a bitch, you could tell he was getting ripe for a prank because the drunker he got, his eyes would go to crossing. When he, got, when he got drunk, his eyes would cross. And I mean, he'd be like, man. And, and what was funny, Jeff was a good looking dude. He could go in a fucking bar and at eight o'clock had the finest son of a bitch in there underneath his arm. But he would leave with the girl with the mustache. I mean, the motherfucker, he would leave with some ugly son of bitches. And, uh, but anyway, one of these nights they had a party over there at, uh, Archer and, uh, they told him and said, uh, Jeff, did you know? And they had a uh, one of them Benjamin pump-up pistols. Mm -hmm. He said, did you know that if you're strong enough, stout enough, that you can put your thumb over the end of this and the air can't escape and the gun can't go off? Of course, old Jeff's like, boom, shit, you knew it. <laughs> he said, all right. So he pumps it up 10 times. Pulls it up, but what he did was he dropped that BB in beside Well. Jeff with his cross eyes, he can't see that son of a bitch. <laughs> he, he drops that son of a bitch in there and he pumps that there and, he, and Jeff, he's watching and he, and all of a sudden, poo! And he drops that 
Reálne sa. See you. Well, motherfucker, if you can do it, I can do it. Give me that son of a bitch. So he gets that son of a bitch, pumps that motherfucker up <laughs> one, ten times. And he sit there and everybody at that fucking party is like, oh, this is going to be good. <laughs> and I'm just, y'all ready? Y'all ready? And all of a sudden, pow. <laughs> <laughs> he starts doing the chicken stance, high step. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> and every time his heart beat, that damn young blood would shoot out there. Hell, it looked like a goddamn Jonestown massacre before it was all over. <laughs> that son of a bitch. So, and, and, and for years after that, he still had that BB. We tell him, hey, Jeff, you own the BB. Yep, still in there. He rolled it so much around, but when he went to work for Encore, they had to uh, finally uh, cut it out because he had to go have surgery to get cut out because it was a conductor of electricity. That's so all I could not do. It. And then we called him Wolfman for. A while when the, uh, uh, I told you about the wolf that got on him. I and, love these stories. Oh, God damn. Oh, Jeff. They, I hadn't heard you know, this he works one. for Encore Electric. They get a power outage over there at, uh, <laughs> South of Holiday. Wolf, man. So Jeff, he gets out there and he's looking for this, you know, this transformer <laughs> with the power out. See if the fuse is blowing. Oh, all of a sudden, he calls his boss. He goes, you need to get out here. He said, why, Jeff? It's like midnight. Well, what the fuck you want? He, there's a wolf out here, and I can't get rid of him. He won't go nowhere. And he goes, a wolf? You mean a cow? And goes, no, I know the difference between a wolf and a cow. <laughs> this is a fucking wolf. He said he's just standing there, standing on his ground. I've been hollering at him. He won't leave. He just standing there with his teeth bared at me. He won't go. And uh, he says, Oh, bullshit. It's a fucking cow. He's, I'm telling you, it's a fucking wolf. It's huge. He's huge. Just standing in his ground. and can't go. I've been hollering at him for 45 minutes. So his boss has to get out of bed, drive all the way from Wichita, Tanglewood, all the way out there south of Holiday <laughs> to uh, Stonewall Jackson uh, Park <laughs> and gets out there and come find Jeff. And when he gets there, Jeff has got that light. Still trained on that damn wolf because he's afraid if he'll run, somebody's going to take him down. It's going to take him down. It'll be bad. <laughs> and he gets up there and he's, where is he doing? See, I told you he's right there. It was one of them 3D deals for the bow hunting. Oh. Yeah, oh. yeah. Oh. yeah, they have the bow sheets up there mm-hmm. in that book. <laughs> <laughs> and it got him. <laughs> he's been standing there for an hour and a half with a standoff with that goddamn... <laughs> Did he yeah. not think it would blink or fucking uh, lick his hey, lips? He might have had to <laughs> He might have right, been so standing in his ground. He's standing in his Did ground. everybody fuck with him about that? Oh, fuck. This, he I can't a, believe he told remember, anybody. Remember what I'm talking about, no shame? Yeah. All right, that happened at like, at what, like 1 o'clock, 1.30 by the time me, Mitch, and Hutch are in Matador, Texas, and we're hunting a, a contest, a Graham hunt. And he calls us. We got to be the first one. <laughs> you ain't gonna believe what fucking happened. <laughs> you ain't gonna. I said, believe me, Jeff. We'll believe. It. I said, but we're hunting. Goes, no way, man. He goes, you gotta hear that. So we called him Wolfman Jack after that. Ah, <laughs> oh, fucking that goddamn Jeff. I'm telling What's you. What's the story about the that he snuck into a girl's house or something? And oh yeah, yeah, he snuck into a uh, gal. What they were in high school, and he's sneaking her house uh, all the time. He's mm-hmm. sneaking in her room. He gave his pussy, mm. and because she liked to fuck just as much as he did, <laughs> and then she was he would sneak out and go on. Well, one night he got drunk and he comes over there and he sneaks, pulls her old window up, and he crawls in there <laughs> and he goes, "Hey, hey!" I won't call her name. I think I did on one post. <laughs> hey, hey, hey! And it well, it wasn't her. Uh-oh. It was her daddy. They had swapped <laughs> rooms, and uh, and her dad pulls out a pistol out from under that desk. Sticks in fucking old Jeff's oh, head. Shit. Jeff likes to kill, wrecks himself getting out that fucking window. Yeah. And uh, pussy's pussy. He waited 15 minutes. He goes, Yep, we better go to the next window. <laughs> 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 he wasn't no quitter, my guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What was funny is that same gal, that same gal and uh, this other girl had two of them, and they had a car and a little, I won't even say the car, a little old sports car. And me, Jeff, and Sean, and uh, Keith, I just used first name. <laughs> We're sitting out front of this, our trailer house we lived on at the time. So there, bullshit, drinking a beer, smoking a cigarette, and all of a sudden that little car comes pulling up. Jeff, go see what them motherfuckers want. So old Jeff, he goes out there, and you can see old Jeff bend down and talk to him all the time. <laughs> he looks over at us. 
What does this motherfucker do? Hey, please, hey, come here, come here. He can't even talk. He's so excited. And uh, Sean goes, go see what that motherfucker wants. I go out there, and uh, we get out there, and I said, Jeff, what's your problem? <laughs> I said, what is it, motherfucker? Say something. And finally, the, the blonde and the driver skills, y'all want to fuck or what? Whoa. I said, that's a trick question. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Or, she goes, well, or what? She goes, well, I said, we'll fuck all of you or none of you. He said, but before we fuck y'all, he said, you've got to watch me and her fuck each other. And I said, I'm in like a motherfucker. <laughs> he said, you, you ain't got to tell me twice where and when. Let's go. And uh, this feels like of course, a trick. old Jeff, he still ain't been able to talk. <laughs> he, he is in happy land. And so he said, okay. He said, well, we'll go to the, we'll go to Austin's get some rubbers and he said, we'll meet you there. And then Jeff goes, I'm going with them. And he dives in the back of that. You can't get in this little sports car, but he got in that much. So they go to the deal and I go up there and my buddies, Keith and Sean up there, and I tell them what the deal was. And I was trying to go, Fuck them motherfuckers. I ain't fucking them motherfuckers. I said, for real? And I was like, are what? you shitting me? I said, these motherfuckers. I said, hell, we'll just watch them fuck each other. And I'll sit over in the corner and jack off. <laughs> and he goes, nah, fuck them motherfuckers. Hell, they've been over there fucking, uh, fucking them goddamn drug heads over in Wichita. I don't want to know about that pussy. I was like, we wear rubber. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> he, he, you were being logical. Yeah. I was like, God damn, man. I'm, you don't get this kind of offer uh, <laughs> very often. So finally, they they finally weekend and, and uh, talk to us. So we get to me and him, Keith, we go up there to the offices and we pull up beside him, pull up there. And old Jeff, he's still in <laughs> happy land. And uh, then about that time, and uh, Jeff's going, hey, hey, we got the rubber. Let's go down here. Fuck that. I ain't fucking them motherfuckers. I wouldn't fuck them motherfuckers with your dick. And uh, the one girl goes, are you fucking gay? He goes, fuck no. I ain't fucking your goat smelling pussy <laughs> ass. And the deal is over now. Yep. <laughs> it's all or none. Jeff, never in his life would he ever try to fight Sean, Sean because he knows Sean would kill him. But Jeff was reeling the fight that night. <laughs> you motherfucker, that's a bunch of bullshit. You go damn I mean, this son of a bitch, he grew fine. Out of nowhere, Shazam showed up. He had to fuck this pussy deal up, and they left him sitting there at the bar. <laughs> you a motherfucker. You a motherfucker. Yeah. Oh, that fucking Jeff. And then one night, he, he goes with this uh, uh, one-legged gal. He got the one-legged gal, and, of course, and she's married. And, uh, She's dead now, so but but anyway, he he, he fucks, bless her. fucks that son of a bitch, and the next day he, he calls Steve, his roommate Steve. You got to come get me, man. Got to come get me. He said, "Why?" I said, "Her husband's coming home with some so, so, so. so he goes over and gets him barely survived. <laughs> Wasn't a little bit later, fucking her husband has his hat. He left his hat oh. over at his house, and he's wearing his hat when he drove by. Motherfucker got my goddamn hat. <laughs> he said, you want me to turn around now? I thought, no, it's worth it. And about two, the next weekend later, we got a big party out there, bonfire at the lake deal. And old Je or Steve, he throws a, a log over. Jeff, your date's ready. <laughs> <laughs> he said that some bitch would get uh, get a nut by rubbing her nub. <laughs> he, said that, he said, that's some bitch go crazy. I go rubbing that foot nub while I'm fucking her. I can't believe there's this much shit happening in Archer City, Texas. Can you believe oh, that? Oh, fuck no. God, dude. <clears throat> he got 911 raid call. And now got, kid, I mean, kids, he, uh, kids that age don't even do anything anymore. Y'all are just fucking, y'all had the whole town to yourself. And I bet when you go through Archer City at night, there's no high school kids riding around anymore. Uh, that's a negative ghost rider. There's plenty. My wife is there. Yeah, my wife works at the courthouse. The deputy clerk's office. She gets it quite regular. Yeah, really. Yeah, there's a lot more shit goes on. There's nothing goes on in that <coughs> city anymore. Like yeah. when I was growing up, uh, where the city hall is, it used to be a Dairy Queen, and that's where all the high school kids would go. But fuck, yeah, you, you, know you don't I, see any high school kids out you know, on that's Friday what, night. Yeah, you know, I told, told all the kids one day up there. You know, I said. Uh, I said, well, there was a bunch of my baseball boys that I coached baseball, and they was like, man, there ain't fucking nothing to do in there. And I said, watch it. Y'all come and go with me. And we go up there. There's an old Texaco, uh, Nelson, Texaco. And I said, I pulled up there, pulled uh, pulled the uh, uh, tailgate down, and we sat on the back of that tailgate, me and them three high school boys. In about 30 minutes, we've got like 10 cars. <laughs> We're all out there bullshitting. You know what I said? 
See, that's what we do, do all the fucking time. Easy as that. If we called it Kemp Street, and it was showtime. Yes. Kemp Street. And it was a lot of people yeah, there. Yeah, Good damn. old days. Yeah, we're good. But small town America, there ain't nothing to do. I don't think they do that in big towns either. I bet which I bet you go to Kemp Street now, you just get honked at. Oh, yeah. They, what did they but, about? man, what a great time to grow oh, up. Oh, my God. Off. That was a great era. You know, and I was homeless half time in those areas <laughs> and still had a fucking blast. Yeah, that was, people that was, will never understand the wild shit we used to do going down there. I can remember being butt-ass naked, and I put ropes, two ropes, tied to the front end of a, a bed of a pickup, you know, down there, and would stand, use them to hold on to. Butt-ass naked with nothing on but a cowboy hat and uh, Reebok tennis shoes and stand on the tailgate driving down Kemp Street. <laughs> <laughs> and it was wall-to-wall traffic. Oh, yeah. I mean, just... And it was keep people from all the other towns would come to Wichita. Uh, yep. If you couldn't get laid on Kemp Street, <laughs> you was something wrong with your ass. I mean, like you didn't have no eyeballs. And, uh, you think uh, every town was like that? Yeah. Shit, I don't know. It was a unique. Well, I remember going down there to Arlington one time. Kent Bowie or uh, Co- no Cooper Street? Cooper Street. Street. Cooper yeah. Street Cooper, yep. Same damn way. Yeah. It was. Kent Bowie was Fort Worth. Yeah. Well, I'd, yeah. But it was, that was their big hangout, yeah. too. Cooper Street in Arlington. I remember we went down there, but that goddamn Camp Street. And, you remember, and it was bad, worse. Before, you know, I was 14 years when old. We were, when we were 12 years old, it was a lot more than it was when we were 18 yeah. years old. Yeah, because you remember he had Halliburton yep, Park. Yep, the line. Halliburton Park. Line. There was a lot of stabbings, a lot of yeah. I watched a guy get stabbed over there. That's where Olive Garden is now. <laughs> yeah, tell, yeah they him? used to all be an old warehouse parking lot. We saw Falls them, was man. a tough town. Huh? Where, did he, where did he stab him at? Gut. In the gut. Yeah. Oh. Damn the gut. And the party was over. Everybody yep. went to vote. Gotta go. <laughs> Wichita <laughs> Falls was a tough town. No, there was a lot of shit going on. It was just an old oil field drunk town. Wichita Falls. Did it die him? Did it kill him? Uh, the stab. Yeah, I don't know. I never saw him again. But we got the fuck out of there and I never saw him. He Do you remember the old one Dunkin' drunk. Donuts there? I, I, I put the arrow in the uh, U in the Dunkin' Donuts trying to shoot the O. That, ar- <laughs> that arrow stayed. A buddy of mine pulled up there, and we had the, uh, had the you know, it had that rotating sign, mm-hmm. and he had a compound bow. And I said, let me have that motherfucker. I'll shoot that motherfucker. Out. I shoot and I shot that so much, and that arrow to the day they uh, closed it at, was in that damn you, rotating sign. Do you remember sign. Sambo's? Sambo's right across the street front. Yeah. Could you imagine that restaurant? Now, do you even know what a Sambo's is? No. Sambo's was like a IHOP. There was a black guy on the um oh. on the marquee, and it was called Sambo's. <laughs> yeah, they'd shut them down nowadays. That's where me and Barry Ragsdale and Gary Ragsdale, we all got me and Barry. We worked together at uh Zeno's. Zeno's, That's right. and they called us that one night. Gary said, "Hey, motherfucker, they fucking made jump me." Oh, bye, guy, let's get them. We went over, and one of them happened to be a friend of mine that i went to school with but he was fighting for the other side <laughs> and uh wrong side hey, you looking guy, up sambo there it was right there yeah, i don't sambo. see the black i don't see the black guy maybe you just made that part up no i swear it was maybe sambo's was i guess it wasn't maybe what the hell is that an indian kid maybe it's indian, indian not black kid, kid on a tiger yeah what, what was the food it was just like a hop oh. yeah the 24 hour uh yeah it was one of the few 24 hour restaurants in Wichita. Sam, you had Sambo's and uh, LM restaurant. In Callaway's. And, and uh, where was Callaway's? Over by Union Square. I think it's IHOP now. It was Callaway's. You don't remember that in the Target parking lot? Well, no, there is him. So that's Smoking Sambo. Little oh. Black Sambo. I don't know. I don't know what you, I don't know what you were looking at back then, Jeff. I don't even remember. It wasn't nothing. It was no big deal because it was just Sambo's. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Right. We didn't we think about it. Sambo's yeah, yeah, Taco Burrito. Yep. Yeah, there was that was before our time before they closed them up, basically. Jiffy. Yeah, Jiffy. Jay Louder that was on here the podcast with us. His yeah. dad owned all the Jiffies. There's like right. it was like seven elevens of Wichita Falls. There's like twenty four <clears> of them. <throat> yeah. And nobody yep. was fat back then. Nope. Oh fuck K- no. Kids were I mean Little Adonis is running around. I, I was eating out of trash cans back <laughs> then, so I was eating pizza, yeah. but I was walking everywhere. I, I saw a video or a picture the other day of a beach in yeah, California, like in 1972. Yeah. Ran a fat motherfucker there. Uh, and, uh, yeah. A kid that was fat wasn't even fat. Yeah. He's normal size now. And I, we all had bikes. We was all running. Yeah, they kicked you out when the sun come up and said, when that street light comes yep. on, you better be at my house. My mom, be home. my mom would holler Jeff and Tony for yeah. supper, and then when the the street lights there come on, it's time yep. to be home. Just yeah. fucking yeah. living life. 
You don't see that now. Oh, hell no. Everybody's fucking big and it's sad. Um, and I mean, like, you know, Walmart's now, it's all fucking scooters and. Well, them Walmarts closing the drove, man. In California, they, let, they shut them all down. Yeah, Washington, uh, Portland. Uh, yeah, they're. They've had enough of that fucking uh, shoplifting shit. I don't know how they get. <laughs> how the fuck do they let them some bitch? Like that one, uh, in, uh, I think it was in Portland. Once they figured out they come in, mm-hmm. there was like hundreds of them just flooded the place and just went to taking it off. Yeah. What um, the thing that I that scares me now is the students that are beating their fucking teachers and they're beating oh, the female that's teachers. That's been going on. Yeah, I remember my thinking my second or third day at Ryder High School. This so big <coughs> boy, big big boy. He was in uh, our health class, pretty little teacher, and he had a big boombox. Mm-hmm. Remember the old boombox day? Yeah, that boombox going on. She said, "Hey, so and so, put your." Deal down, he wouldn't put it down, and blah, 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 blah. And then she come over, and she took that son of a bitch up, and he slapped her like a boy. Really? No and shit. And I mean, rolled her ass, and she she went up, immediately left, rolling, crying. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> and then before I could even fart, here come, you remember Mr. Bacon? Mm-mm. He was, I think he was a counselor for all the schools, but he was over at Ryder at all the time. He is one big, giant, black man. And he don't play that game. He slapped he, the fuck he, out of that kid. He dra- no, he dra- took that son of a bitch down, drug him by the collar of his bill. I'm sorry, Mr. Bacon, because he knew he, he didn't want to fuck Mr. Bacon. And uh, he drug his ass out, and we never saw that, that boy again. That's what we need more of, though. Yeah. Like, these kids oh, aren't no, afraid of anything. Get, uh, they would throw Mr. Bacon underneath the jail. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, a... Man, it's a oh, we, and we've let it happen. That's what's sad. We've sat by and let it happen. It don't happen around us. But people are letting it happen. Uh-huh. They don't do nothing about it. That's because Clay Reed wouldn't. Uh, he wouldn't fly in the big city. You know. Oh, don't 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 be mean to my little old boy over there. Yeah. So uh, they're yeah. they're they're stamping out the clay. They're stamping out all the alpha males in all these big cities. Had, yeah. And they're just getting by with all. I this had a shit. guy hunt with me probably about eight years ago, and he he disappointed me because I thought he was a really pretty cool dude. He's like, "Yep, I'm gonna go home and get my son's coach fired." I go, "What do you do?" Grabbed him by the face mask. What? Are you shitting me? Uh-uh. He <clears> said, <throat> I said, he did what? He grabbed me by the face mask. <laughs> Joe Bob Tyler couldn't have a conversation without having a face <laughs> mask you. in his hand. But, Are you listening? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it didn't matter. If you done fucked up, if you're the one closest, yeah. he might be chewing on somebody else. But if, by God, you're the, your face is closest, he's grabbing you. But, yeah. And I, and I just, I, I was like, seriously? Why? Oh, what the fuck? I can't believe he put his hand on my son. He touched his face mask. He grabbed his face mask. And he's chewing on his ass. That's what's wrong with the world. Absolutely. You know, that was eight years ago. That kid will mount to shit in his life probably. But I, I was really shocked when that guy told me that. I thought, I thought she's a really good dude. And then I, I, I lost total respect for him. Over I that. see it uh, a bunch. You know, like we had our coach. Uh, you know, he finally he quit here, and he's a great coach. Now. Defensive coordinator, I will agree, was probably the worst goddamn coach I've ever <laughs> and Mitch will tell you and everybody. I mean, this little bitch was dumb. And, you know, because it's like that buddy of mine is telling me the other day, and he goes, yeah, that's dumb, motherfucker, that's dumb. I, I, I said, man, he was a great coach. I said, he had a bad coordinator. I said, we well, averaged 36 points a game. I said, he and, uh, and a lot of it had to do with his ball. His boy didn't get the ball near right. as much as he would like. But it didn't have nothing to do with – him being a bad coach, and they we're gonna run, run that some bitch off. Uh, Don't y'all have a flat stud over there, a black kid? Uh, or well, did he yeah. move? Yeah, we got a. Uh, yeah, he'll be a senior this year. Well, we got actually, uh, we got uh, Cole Snowball's a badass. He's a stud, and then we got uh, what's the black kid's name? Elijah. He's Jackson. supposed to be really good. Yeah, he's good. And then uh, Dre Donald, he's really good. Yeah, Archer ought to be pretty pretty damn soft. They return. What's going on with is City View ever going to recover from all the shit that they've and, had going on? And like I say, those Your are guys superintendent that I, resigned. Those are the guys I went to school with. Oh, and, they were. Yeah, and yeah, one of my old coaches. And yeah, they bad. But I, like I say, I don't. You know, uh, are they going to go after their pensions? Shit, I don't. For know. everybody that don't know, City View had a coach that was having a fa- sexual relationships with a couple of students. And several, several, and girl got on Facebook and put it on there. Then it come out that a lot of girls had done that, and then supposedly one a girl or two had told about him, and they they didn't do anything. They really didn't investigate it much, and they just they arrested and 
filed charges on like six or seven people in, in the yeah, administrations there. Yeah, and it's a and horrible, the, it's a horrible the, deal. The coach committed suicide. The, yeah, right? coach committed suicide like the day after it all came out. And it, he, he's kin to either the superintendent, the principals, his father in law. It's a fucked up deal. What I'd heard is that they did their own internal investigation <clears throat> and then asked the girl that w- had allegedly done this. She said, no, it didn't happen. So they said, okay, it's good enough for us. And her us. parents said they wanted to drop it, is what I was told. Her right. parents said, don't drop it, that's the end of it. Well, I obviously should have called someone else. Yeah. It's a bad deal. But I wonder if they're going to go after their pension. See, I, and I think that sucks. They're called innocent until proven guilty. Nobody's proven guilt for me. I'm not saying one way or the other. But I also, you remember the old boy that, I'm not saying that, that the, the, the guy didn't commit the, the right. deal. He wouldn't but have actually, killed himself if he was innocent. Right, yeah, yeah. Like I say... He damned himself when he did that. It's kind of like mixing, but as far as you know, not knowing or or uh, hiding it or something like that, uh, from sources I say they said a lot of them dramas may be dismissed, but but nobody's knows. But I don't want to I don't want to uh, burn somebody on the cross before right. I figured out what. The uh, fact, I agree with you on that, but what what doing. really stinks is all the administrators that were that <clears throat> that lost their jobs. If they didn't call nine one the cops and report CPS. it and stuff, or CPS, whatever they're supposed to do, yeah. if they didn't do the proper channels, they probably screwed themselves. I yeah. don't know the people. But everybody I know that knows them says they're yeah. good people. And it's a shitty situation for them. It was a shitty for those those girls. It was a lot worse deal for them. Yeah. But I don't think if someone works somewhere for 30 years and they build a pension and you fire them that you should be able to take their pension. And I had a friend of mine that was a police chief in a big, big city in Texas was at a police chief's conference, and guess what he got? A D-Wobbly. Took his pension? Took his pension away from him. He went and fought it, and they beat they they beat him out of it. A big time. I'm talking a 250,000 plus. Damn. And they took his pension. Fire him. He should have got fired. But why would he? All those years and all his pension, he should have got that money. There should be no reason to keep his pension for that. I think it's a bullshit deal. Yeah. I would say What's crazy is like whenever you see these stories, and it's a male, male teacher doing a little high school girl, you're like, oh, what a. What a what a scumbag! But when you see the story and it's it's the hot teacher screwing the screwing the boy, you're like, hell yeah! Hell, and I don't get Andy, why these guys are telling. Me and Clay don't think that way. What is wrong with you? We do, we think that is absolutely ridiculous. No, no, I just, <laughs> no. They're, they're little heroes it, it, it's running like around. A boy that got caught having sex with his uh, teacher and uh, and uh, he got sent home. And of course, they called his mom. And boy, his mom's a mad motherfucker. Mm-hmm. And she said, you go to your room, and when your dad gets here, I'm on. He is going to have a word with you. You understand <laughs> me? That is perverse, blah blah. So when dad gets there, mom tells him, he says, "You know what your boy was doing? He got caught having sex with a teacher." And, and of course, dad's like inside. He's going, "Yeah, my boy. All right." He said, "Well, I'll t- I'll, I'll take care of this. I'll take care." <laughs> so he goes in. And he goes, and he shuts the door behind him, and he goes, uh, "So got caught having sex with a teacher. Look over here." He goes, he goes, hey, that's my boy. He said, all right. He goes, how was it? He goes, ah, it's all right, but my, boy, my asshole sure hurts. <laughs> <laughs> we and, and a lot of them are good-looking ladies, too. Oh, yeah. Like, it's, yeah, not, it's not the ugly that's lunch happened lady. in Archer City, yeah. With uh, a girl? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and well, good-looking? Fi- well, a couple of, couple of times. And I mean, some fine-ass motherfucker, and I'm like, why in the hell would you tell on that son of a bitch? I yeah, that, keep I going back. I just took that to my grave. <laughs> we had that happen in our house one time. Yeah. Some uh, was sexting. One of the teachers was sexting someone, and in your house, you don't remember this when we were in Canada hunting that time. I don't think I do. And I got a call from the superintendent. Was you getting sex? No. Oh, fuck, I was no, in no, Canada. No, 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 no. I was already graduated. And so, uh, anyways, I got home. <laughs> I don't remember that. Oh, yeah, I do. And so. Well, yeah, you lived it. <laughs> and so I was. So I went and talked to this other son. And I said, listen. I said, are you sexting one of your teachers? Oh, yeah, but it's not serious. That was the answer. God. I go, I go, what are you thinking? She's married. It's not serious. It's not serious. Anyways, the lady never was a substitute ever again. Husband might think and it's then, serious. And then the guy that was in charge calls me up and he tells me about it. I mean, or told me about it and stuff. And he's like, well, what do you want to do? I said, well, I said, I'm, this sounds really horrible. But I said, my son's 17 years old, fixing to be 18 years old. I said, 
it's not that big a deal to me on this end. I said, if it was my daughter, I'd be a mad motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. But I Double said, standard again. It yeah. was. But what would you do? You have boys and girls. If it was yeah. one of your sons, would that be that big a deal to you? Oh, it's it's totally different. <laughs> so you agree with me? Oh yeah, yeah. absolutely. I didn't, I didn't find it that oh, big yeah. a deal. If, but if, if Lindy's doing that, then oh, we, yeah, got, yeah, we, we got, got a different story. Yeah. yeah, but I did. But I, Dawson, I, it's like, I I have a boy. But I asked him. I said, Payne. I said, uh, Is this going? Oh yeah, it's not serious. Oh yeah, it's not serious. Hmm. I didn't know what to say. I'm fucking jealous. Of course. I never did see the lady or nothing. They, say, they assured me from the school she was never going to substitute again. But what had happened was we never had she had given her number to these boys, and they were about, yeah. there was about four or five of them. But they thought I, a lot of parents in town thought I was going to be real mad. That? Why would you If you're a substitute teacher, why would you even think that that would be she, okay? her? I guess her husband traveled a lot, and she was lonely. I don't know. Yeah. I never did. I didn't follow. But a lot of people in town thought I was going to go raise a bunch of hell and shit up there. And I was like, listen, it's not that big a deal to me. I mean, it was nothing going. It was, it's, it's a boy, and it was different. If it had been my daughter, I'd have been a mad motherfucker. Yeah. Totally different story. Yes. And that's why? Because you, like, you feel like they're taking advantage of her naivety? I'm thinking when I was 17 years old, I'd have done the same fucking thing if I could have. So no, did but did you it, have any teachers that you? you no, oh, that I would have liked to. Yeah, yeah, that really? I did. No, but well, lots we of didn't them. Have no, no, no. All, all, all our, our teachers no. were old. Yeah, all right, kids. No, we <laughs> had, your shirt out. We had a smoke show for a, a substitute one time. I am 55 years old. I was 15 at this time, and she wore a black bra with a black shirt unbuttoned about halfway down, and she looked like Morgan Fairchild. Do you remember Morgan Fairchild? The chick that was on... Uh, I don't know why. I was thinking Morgan Freeman. <laughs> no. Like, Morgan Fairchild. She was an actress. Oh, yeah. Blondie. Yeah. Oh, and God this is what this chick looked like. Smoking. And, and she come over to deal to help me, and she fucking... She's still good looking. Oh, yeah. Oh, she was really smoking when she was when she was back then. What was she on? Uh, Flamingo Road or something. What was that, yeah. that show? And I think she was in... But look, man, that's a good looking woman. Anyways, this yeah. lady looked like her, and whoo... Wore a black yeah, bra. I didn't have she had a black bra and with a black little shirt that was unbuttoned halfway down. And I'm 55 years old, and I still remember that day. Mm. But she was a yeah, really have, oh, I can't remember. And you know, I don't really ever remember having a substitute, really, ever in my life, really. No, we had some because we had them. We had them 1950 uh, teachers. You we know, had a lot of those, and they, were, and they yeah, never they took off. Yeah. Did y'all have Mr. Fag at Iowa Park? <clears throat> Who? Coach Fag. That was his last name was Fag. No. He was I, old I school. Remember. Oh, he was I old. I would have remembered. You would, remember. you would not, that name have, stuck you out. Would not have smarted off to him but one time. Oh, he was a he was an old Marine. His, oh, his wife was my fourth grade teacher growing he up. He had to be a tough son of a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> I, remember I, come, I remember I come yeah. home. I'm in fourth grade. And my mom goes, who do you have? I got Miss Fag. Why do you call her that? Oh, What's her name? Miss, no, her husband was Mr. Coach Fag. Mrs. Fag? Yeah. And they were some old, they would have been some uh, square dancers and shit. I mean, but he was a, he had that old fucking flat top. Remember the old haircut, flat oh, top yeah. haircut, the 60s glasses and shit? That's the way he was. But he was a, he he was a, I think he coached maybe at Barwise or somewhere. Oh, but when I got into junior high, they he had retired. Both of them retired. But she was my fourth grade teacher at elementary. She was a nice lady. She was a good teacher. But he was, he was not one to put up with a lot of bullshit. Speaking Did y'all have Mr. Anderson? I don't remember. He was old high. He taught ethics at old high, but he was one of our substitute teachers. He was a good old guy. He was bald. Actually, I said don't bald. remember ever having a substitute teacher one time. I can't. I was trying to think. I don't. Oh, I'm sure we did a lot. I just don't remember any of them. But but I remembered her. Well, hell yeah. She was a yeah, smoke show. Yeah, name like that. Speaking of, uh, it's just a joke. There was a kid. He was gaming. <clears throat> he was playing one of those war games, and he accidentally butt dialed nine one one. I seen that, and he's fucking yeah. Fuck you, kill you, bitch. Da, 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 oh da, Jesus, SWAT so, team show up. Oh yeah, fuck the, yeah, they did. Yeah, they did. He I mean, like they had a, he confessed to killing two people over nine one one, and like <laughs> they had it. I mean, he, is that old boy was a, <laughs> just, dude, dude. It was just a game. I was just playing. I was just playing the video gun. games. Yeah, <laughs> fuck. God. But they're like, fuck yeah, I killed two of them, and you know, it's all on nine one one. So they sent the show. Have you seen the trailer to that new show with Jennifer Lawrence? I don't Yes. Uh, no hard feelings. Yes. Oh that looks hilarious, God. doesn't Damn it? it. I'll got to go I think it's it. finally going to be like a good comedy. Well, like, we ain't had one of them in years. I'll tell you, we ain't had one. Yeah, I just, I watched the trailer the other night. Drag this a little bit closer and, to you. 
I was like, yeah, I watched it and, and damn near pissed on myself. I did too. I mean, I was it like, came across my face. I'm my cousin. Okay, he's my second cousin. <laughs> We've got a lot of we got a lot of airplane time, so I hope it comes out because that's one only time I watch June movies. 2023. Because okay. he, uh, it's it's like the parents have a loser that won't leave the basement, and they're like, just take him. And Jennifer Lawrence does everything she can. It looks funny. Do you so want this me is to kind of like date him or, or date, date him. him? I want you to date the hell out of him. <laughs> okay, I'll so date him like hard. this is like failure to launch with uh, Matthew McConaughey. Kind of. Kind of. Yeah. Wa- but opposite. Uh, yeah. you, opposite. The only time I watch movies is on planes. The only time it seems like. I watched the last two, three movies I've watched, I bawled my eyes out. One of them was The Mighty Orphans. Yep. Fucking cried my eyes out. That's a great movie. Yeah, and then... The, the, the book was probably the better book, than yeah, the, the, the book. book. After reading the book, and yeah. then had to that that happens most times. Yeah. Obviously. Then I watched um, a movie the other day, and I can't remember. It's about a black guy that was a pilot in Korea, and um, he goes through a bunch of racial bullshit. But he he dies over there. It's a great show. But anyway, he's a pilot, and he um, what was the name of that show? It's on American Airlines right now. It's a, it's a great, great movie. And I watched Top Gun, the new Top Gun, which was really good. Was really and I good. guess it didn't win any awards at the Academy Awards. It's too American. I'm sure not. Hell, he didn't even show up to the award show. I wouldn't either. Yeah. The um, When we were talking about uh, Guns N' Roses, I found Guns N' Roses played November Rain with Elton John at like one of the VMAs back in the 90s. Fucking fantastic. Yeah, they I used to be badasses. I was the one to go see him in Andy's like, man, you don't want to see that oh, fat fucker. No, we had a guy terrible. hunting with us that done sound somewhere at a stage. Yeah. And he says like Vince Neil. You know, it was Vince Neil, you know. Yeah. Vince Neil today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like yeah, that's yeah, all yeah. that's all you hear is yeah, like Axel Piper Rose is just as bad. Yeah. I mean Well, they turned the comments off of the off of the video where he's singing at Lisa Marie's funeral. When they turn the comments off of a video, it's bad. It you ain't, know it's it, bad. It ain't doing that good. What a great rock and roll band! But, too. Uh, oh my god! But uh, I did not know that he did that. He played with Elton John. At did a this, collab? Yeah, at like a VMA. But that was like when music was cool. Like I could see why the VMAs and award shows like that brought Elton in a lot John of viewers. Was ever cool? Oh Fuck, yeah! You want hear my impersonation, of Elton John? He's queer. Here, here's a uh, bitch is good. You like him? Fuck, he's, yeah, he you can, don't think he's fucking great? Great voice. He can, voice? No. He can play Reed. that piano. That is not my kind of music. Oh, I love it. <laughs> here's uh, here's Axel at uh, Lisa Marie's. I hate this fucking thing. You fixed this the other day. You had it all figured out. Well, that was over there. Oh Jesus Christ! Bad. So it- that sounds like me. <laughs> it's horrible. I did karaoke I'm the other night, and I was that bad. They played the one with him and Elton John. Hold on. Oh, Jesus. You ever get embarrassed for a motherfucker? I am right you now. Know, where you feel weird uh, about watching it? Yeah. yeah. I'm embarrassed for him. Yeah. I feel bad for the guy. Try to find yeah, the one with him and like Elton John. looks like somebody's lesbian mom. Oh, they're horrible. The whole uh. rock and roll guys. Uh, <laughs> but I could see, like, because na- now nobody watches these award shows. And, I mean, they're fucking garbage. The music sucks. Um, but back then, this was, this was Dana Carvey there. He says, this is the most money that we've spent on a production. Holy smoke. Yeah, that sounds awesome. Just oh. add it. Come on. <laughs> He's deteriorated. Too much heroin. Why What's bad in his mind? He thinks he looks thing like that. Down. You know, you can turn it down on your computer, too. Oh, that's true, too. No, I think I can only... No, you have to slide that bar down. There you go. That's much better. Yeah. Yeah, you ain't gonna make me like Elton John. That's Gun... That's Axel. Yeah, but he's on the other side. Gun Tiny Dancer by Guns N' Roses by Elton John is awesome. I can see a slash get after it, boy. That motherfucker can get it now.
Makes me miss my 88 Firebird. <laughs> this is the best part of the whole fucking song is seven minutes in. I didn't know. I mean, Axel's got to be, he's got to be a musician to be able to play the piano and shit like that. You know, those guys got some serious pussy back in the day. Yeah. I you know, bet Elton John didn't. No. He, he did. could have, though. He got a bad piece of pussy yeah. that turned him gay. Look at that. You play guitar, don't you? Yeah. Like that? Not like no. that. <laughs> Negative, Ghost Rider. I play just good enough to entertain myself. He's the second greatest but black guitar player ever. I have found that there are two great groups of people that are easy to play for. They're called drunks and children. They don't give a fuck what you sound like. But drunk children can you, be a problem. You got that, then, then you're over at City View. When did you learn that? <laughs> yeah, you're fucked up. Damn. When did you learn to play guitar? Uh, I guess that would be back in... Uh, I can't remember when it was, but anyway, time gets by. But I, I went off somewhere, and I was working, and when I come back for a year... Hell, I guess it was in 97. Anyway, I went to work on ranch, come back, and my buddy was playing a guitar. Mm -hmm. And uh, he didn't know how to play the guitar when I left. <laughs> and I was like, well, motherfucker. And I always said that I couldn't play the guitar because my hands are too big. you know. Right. Da, da, da. And I used it as a crutch. Well, then I said, of course, when Sam said he could play, and he played way better than me still to this day. I said, motherfucker, if you can play the guitar, I can play the guitar. I was gonna let so I went and bought me a goddamn two hundred dollar fender guitar and every night I'd go G C D and you just go G C <laughs> and you gotta make program your hand. And I remember the first time where I could play. If you can play G, C, and D, you can play any country western song there is. Damn near any song you want. And uh, cause it's got that deal. So I, boy, I got to where I could play a couple of little old times. And I've always been pretty good about making up songs as I go <laughs> along, and they're called them a porno song. And uh, you may not like them because I'll usually pick you out. <laughs> it, it, it's kind of like redneck, uh, uh, you know, the shows where they uh, uh, rap. Redneck oh, rap, you know, right. uh, throw down. All right, yeah. I'll make something up about you as I go along. Da, 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 da. Well, I, I got. I remember the first time I played GCD, I took it to the Legion Hall, had it strapped on my back. I looked like Elvis walking <laughs> out the door. And when I got up there, there was uh, Roy Conradi, uh, Roy Les, somebody else, Les Conradi, and uh, anyway, four Winthors guys, Jeff Lindemann. Anyway, they're at the bar, and they already had a head start on the drink. You know, <laughs> I mean, they're drunk. And old Roy, he says, hey, play me a fucking song. I said, boys, I don't play cheap. I play for beer. And old Roy takes out $100, and he throws it on death. As long as you're playing, I'm playing. All right. So about every five, ten minutes, I'd have to make up some stupid song, and I'd play. Dah, 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 dah. <laughs> and then we kept drinking, and when the bar closed at midnight, they got up, and I mean, they are fucked up, stumbling down drunk, and there's $38 left on the deal, and the old I said, Roy, I said, you left, you got some money left on here. I said, get it to the piano player. And I said, well, <laughs> I'm the closest thing to a piano player. <laughs> my first pain gig, goddamn. <laughs> yeah, that's fucking. But you know, Hope Jones? Mm -mm. Yes. Yes, old yeah. Hope. Ty, Ho, Ty's you know, buddy. Me right? and Ho and uh, Ty. Who? Ty McLemore. Yeah. He's, oh. he's from over uh, Stanford. Well, me, Hope, and Ty hunted that last uh, Myers hunt last year and won it. Well, I didn't know who Holt was. And Ty, Ty tells me, he was my old man, he's a singer songwriter. I said, Holt Jones? I said, who the hell is Holt Jones? I didn't know who he was. And he sends me these deals on Spotify and uh, and he's really good. And I go, God dang, that looks good. So then I tell Kelly, I said, yeah, I hunted with Holt Jones. And my daughter goes, you know Holt Jones? <laughs> I said, yeah, you know him. She said, oh, yeah, I, lo I love that. I said, yeah, we hunted him last weekend. Man, do you think you can get him to play for my 21st? I remember anime? you told me that. Yeah, okay. and he come out. He and, did uh, it? And I said, yeah, you come out there. And he goes, hell yeah. And I made me a stage out there. This was back in November. I remember this. Yeah, well, actually, 1st of December. Made a stage. Oh, well, Hope showed up. God damn, he's good. Really? And then what was funny is, of course, we all, they got drinking. I'm not a big drinker. I didn't get drunk, but everybody else did. And Hope got fucked up. And 
Kind of benefited me because he left his capo on my my guitar, so I, <laughs> I still got his capo with the tool. And uh, but but then uh, uh, some other boys, this this high school boy shows up that I coached in pee wee football with some other kids, friends of ours. He showed up. His name's Eli Anderson, and uh, y'all see if you can get his ass on this motherfucker. He 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 goes, hey coach, mind if I play? I said, goddamn, Eli didn't even know you played it. Oh, I do a little bit. So I, I'm, he was going to sing at the Ag deal for his talent show. I said, well, get your ass up there, son. Of course, Holt's got the big amps and the big speakers. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was cool. We got, I made that stage right in front of an old, big, giant um, fireplace. Got the cow heads. I mean, it was cool. We had a big bonfire. And that guy, dang Eli Anderson, got on there. And he saw the log out of that so much. Matter of fact, he played the Legion Hall last week. <laughs> My guy come up there and had a paying gig. Yeah, it was pretty cool. We were supposed to. I, and then they put clay about, on there and throw beer bottles at <laughs> Talking about Holt. Uh, we were going to have him on the podcast. I forgot to set that date up. Oh, yeah. Oh, so My you know stood, you stood <clears> him up. <throat> we were. Li Good job. <clears throat> Does we he were, have anything on YouTube? I'm sure we were at uh, Squad Fest when Ty messaged me. I remember me. this now. I yes. do remember this. And then we were driving home, and I, me I messaged Holt, and he said he'd love to do it anytime. And then, oh, well, anytime's coming up. He I has the ultimate mullet. Oh, really? I mean, it's so much. He's got a mullet. I mean, that hair is that guy. Put a on YouTube. Did you have a mullet? Did I have when a you mullet? were a kid? No, we had the perm. Haircut. We didn't. Oh, you, we didn't. No, we didn't. I didn't have nothing. You never I, had the perm in the back of your head? Hell no. No, that was never mm. going to happen. To me. I had that. I, guarantee. <laughs> I never had a haircut. I you, looked like a hippie because uh, I couldn't afford a haircut. You, did you know Melissa Garrett? She's married to uh, uh, Brown, Scott Brown. God damn, they married. They live in Holiday. I'm sure. They anyway, she gave me my deal. I saw her mom the other day at the casino, and her mom goes, "You got a permanent you in had my that kitchen perm mullet." Oh yeah, yeah, back with the, the on the back. Yeah, no, no, I was not. Scott, not Scott Brown. Uh, what's his name? Yeah. Hey, what happened to the boy from ha that from Holiday that had the heart attack? Uh, some high school kid. He's friends with oh, you. Oh, Sean, Sean Poor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sean, yeah, big old football player. So, uh, I guess he's doing Jerry Brown. Better. She's married to Jerry Brown. Jerry Brown. You know Jerry Brown. No, he just yeah, he just started having troubles and next thing you know, went downhill and they hauled his ass down there. That's them right there. There's a lot of people that are doing that right now. <laughs> I ain't got no goddamn glass. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Hold on, I'll pull it up where you can Your try. cheaters? Yeah, I ain't got my cheaters. Jeff yeah. usually has a pair. He ain't he can't fucking see. He ain't got no glasses. Well, goddamn he ain't that fucking blind. Oh, Ray Charles could see that shit. Uh, oh, well, no. maybe you don't know. Do him. you wear glasses when you hunt? No, no, I can see a fly at a thousand yards. I just when it gets cut close, oh, right reading. there. Yeah, I, matter of fact, I went and had my eyes checked. I thought, man, my eyes get bad. Was, oh no, you got twenty twenty vision. I said, well, how the fuck do I got twenty twenty vision when I can't read the newspaper? So, oh, that's different. I said, well, it's vision, vision. But, <laughs> no, but no, I yeah, I remember the first time I was giving Mitch when I was about forty five. He he pulled up to get a gate and he went to fumbling for his cheater. Like you fucking blind motherfucker, and then. When he was getting out, I found them cheaters, and I put them on. I go, holy shit. It's a whole different world. I didn't realize I was fucking blind. <laughs> I need glasses. I don't have cheaters. I got glasses, but I left them in there. Oh, really? Yeah, I, I wear know, glasses every day. I still see good, good, good from far, but I just didn't want to get up close. I can't do contacts, I don't think, because I don't think I like shit in my eye. I had LASIK done. It was the best thing I've ever done. Oh, yeah. That, oh, fucking you change, pull music change my world. Well, I mean, I can, I guess. I want to see this kid. Well, I don't. We're Daddy him on Holt, the Jones. Holt Jones, ladies and gentlemen, from Stan his bo his brother was the stud that, uh, for Albany. His brother was, yeah, yeah, uh, Lefebvre. Oh, okay, yeah, he's got a good voice. Yeah, I wish I had my phone. He, he is very good. Um, yeah, he, he played a little bit. You sound like me at karaoke in Mexico, boy. That was terrible. They changed words on songs. Jeff oh, was God. doing Jeff was doing rap songs, eighty I, rap songs, and he his brain doesn't Beastie process he, he doesn't no. process it that fast. It he was, did Baby Got Back. I got Baby Got Back from uh, I can't remember his name now. Sir Mix a Lot. Yeah, that, nobody's yeah. gonna get Sir Mix a Lot and Jeff Stanfield confused. I can promise you that much. <laughs> and then I did uh, Bobby Brown. Every little step I take, and she did yeah. my prerogative. Because I know the words to it better. But then I wanted to do Biz Marquis 
They say she's he's you say he's just a friend. I know the words to that song. They wouldn't let me do it but two. This one lady got all maxed pissy out. acting. You maxed out at they two? Said, you can only do two. I said, well, that's fine with me. This one lady was pissed. She goes, we were the first people to do it. We had to be able to do more and more. I said, well, I am well, you, got, you got to make your own rap. Hell, I used to be a rapper by a guy when I was 16 years old. <laughs> <laughs> Boombox. Johnny Clay is my name. <laughs> Chasing that pussy is my game. I come from a town called Archer City. The girls ain't bad, but I wouldn't call them pretty. <laughs> <laughs> Walk down the street, everything in hand, thinking to myself that I'm a big man. Cause when it comes to killing, when it comes to the fight, ain't many boys going to read me my rap. <laughs> 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 yeah. Jack, Jack of all trades. Sixteen years old, baby. You I thought you still were remember it on the way out. It's like that. Uh, what was it? I think I learned this one in third grade. Uh, motherfucking titty sucking two ball bitch. Your mama's in the kitchen cooking red hot shit. Your daddy's in jail raising some hell. Your sister's on the corner saying pussy for sale. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we're gonna start wrapping up. We've gone over two and a half hours. That's good, it's raining at I'm home not, too. My oh, eyeballs good. are floating right now. You got, um, you got some rain in your area, pretty close. Of course what? he does. Yep. Of course he does. That's All awesome. the fucking time. Archer City. It's just that's where the rain is. They're living right over there. Just just Finally. went through there. What uh, like was there any anything that other than like you dispelled a lot of myths? Like as far as like how often you can hunt a property. What else did you learn out out of your coyote well, you, you, day? You know they're. You know, I went and did a deal at North Carolina. Uh, yeah, speaking. you're taking some heat over that, I yeah. saw. Yeah. Oh, well, I get over there, and out there was one guy, you know, one guy, and he he was on before me, and, oh, damn, I don't know what I pissed him and pissed him off, but no matter what I said, he was going to disagree with me. And like I think he it, spoke before you did? Because yeah. like, they, yeah. they didn't have, like, a yeah, open... They had, well, they had three different guys. They had one guy, then this guy, and then I was the last guy, and... And then they had us all up on the table. Like and, a panel type. Yeah, thing. yeah. And you, the audience could ask you a question, quick Q&A, you right. know, like a round table. Well, they kept asking me a question, and, and I guess he got to Pissed him off? No matter what. No, nah, he wasn't. He wasn't mad or anything like that, but he just he just disagreed with everything. Well, you know, I'd say something, and they'd say, well, I'd have to disagree with you. And I said, how did I know you disagreed with the last 30 <laughs> things? I, I didn't say that. I just let him go with it. I was, I was but what nine. was he disagreeing with you about? Oh, What's like probably like for answer, you know, one, the one guy said, this is for Clay. Uh, uh, how long uh, before you uh, make a st- – after you kill a coyote, would you go back and make that stand? And I told the story about going to the same spot every day, using the same sounds. I said, you know, a lot of people give credit to uh, coyotes too much credit. Right. I said, motherfucking coyote's a cow. And then, and of course, he disagreed with that. Oh, you know that? And I said, well, I said, did you just miss the part where I killed so many? At that I killed one a cow today. Uh, yeah, yeah. And I said, went well, using the same bullshit. And then uh, what was the other one? I mean, there were just... A lot of things, and then, then you know, everybody, they a thing that they like to throw in your face is, uh, well, there's a difference between an Eastern cow and a Texas cow. I said a cow is a cow. I said, and uh, and they they think everybody back east kind of thinks that the cow is just jumping. Up. Not everybody, but you know, right. you know, they that's a common myth. There's so many cows and. There's not a, not as many coyote hunters out here, and which is totally opposite. We got the biggest contest. We got a contest every weekend. Right. There's a coyote hunter under every tree. So, And then, of course, I told him, I said, well, I did the same thing when we hunted the eastern. I hunted the eastern, which is in Virginia, but we hunted that eastern. We killed 22 uh, coyotes, and we did the exact same thing that I did in Texas right. as we do. Over, he anyway, just couldn't I, believe that it would work. No, nah, yeah, like I say, I, he just, I guess he wanted to bust my balls, and he was a nice guy and all that, but I, I, I don't know. I don't think anybody's allowed to bust your balls anymore when it yeah. comes to coyote hunting. Like, you killed a coyote, a day, you killed 430 coyotes in a calendar year. Like, well, what is there, wanna, what ball, like, where are you going to bust my balls? Nobody yeah, else has done it. I'm like, God damn, I mean, you can't, uh, uh, that, <clears throat> one thing I said is, well, you can't argue the results. <laughs> I said, my God, I said, I, I said, right. it ain't like I'm, I come, 18 hours to lie up right. here on, on, on stage. And, uh, and that, nah, it, but it, everything was pretty cool. Matter of fact, I met some cool guys, got some good connections at one bunch. They're going to come coyote hunt with me. And I think they said their family owns Maybelline makeup. Oh, wow. Got like 50,000 acres. And so I said, hell yeah, I'm coming to that motherfucker. <laughs> and he said, yeah, come down here. So they're going to come up and hog hunt and 
But I don't know when the hell them guys got got dang hogs out the ass out there in Georgia. Big old pigs too. Big big old pigs. But I feel yeah. like predator hunting is getting more popular. Oh, right without now. a doubt. It's, it, yeah, you know why those pigs Zach's are so big? Doing it and... Why you can't helicopter hug on them? Oh, the trees are green all the well, time. Well, in some places out there, you can't. Well, you can't legally, hunt with a rifle. No, no, that's at, true at too. Night. Yeah, and, but uh, you can't get. But you can't get in the swamps and stuff where they're going to be at. Yeah, I think Alabama may have just now made it to where you can uh, hunt at night yeah. with thermal or lights, either one. Yeah. Zach loves varmint hunting. Oh, he's all about it right now. But that's how Zach is. When Zach when Zach finds something he loves, he's 9-0 towards it. Oh, yeah? And then about six weeks later, he's found something else that he loves, mm. and he's 9-0 to it. That sounds like Mitch McLemore. <laughs> that's how Mitch would go from golf to crappie to uh, back to coyote hunting. I got to get him back on the coyote. Zach, leather work. Yeah. Varmint hunting now. Yeah, well, so, I need to get, get he his told ass me, to make it. He them. says he's going to call you tomorrow. He you did kind that. of pop my bubble, though, because uh, with turkey numbers going down, like everybody that we've talked to has been like, well, if you got predators, you're not going to have a whole lot of turkeys. The, but you're killing a lot of coyotes, and you're still seeing a lot of fucking coyotes. But I will tell you this. Now, going back to that. Are you seeing any turkeys? I figured it would take me two years at least to see the residual effect from right. the deer and the turkeys. And it was, it didn't even take a half a year. Oh, really? I seen more fawns than I have. Perfect example. I got this one field over there across from my bunkhouse. If I see five, maybe ten deer at that place at any given time, that is a bunch. Yeah. I come out there back in December. There was probably over a hundred deer on that Ooh, wheat field. Shit. And fawns like I, you, you just don't young right. deer that you don't see, and. uh of course, turkey, you know how them turkey were. You won't see a turkey forever, and then all of a sudden they pop up out of nowhere. Yeah. They're everywhere. Right. They're everywhere. They just showed up in the last week. Yeah. They have fucking, yeah. So, uh, yeah, you want to you wanna do some damage. You kill them, especially deer. I saw it glaringly, but now I'm seeing it with the turkey because now it's that time where the right. turkeys are getting out and getting moved around. It's weird how they, at yeah. my house, you know, uh, it's it's like all of a sudden somebody opens the closet door there and all are. the turkey come flooding out. I love it. I love turkey hunting. Turkey hunting? Fuck yeah. I love it. Fuck yeah. I I remember, love my it. buddy, he called me, and I'm not a turkey hunter. Uh, I've, I've killed a many a turkey, but it ain't been with no shotgun. <laughs> and, uh, uh, but uh, the shrub, he wanted to kill him turkey. And I said, hell, come up here. I said, hell, I found a box blade somebody gave me, <laughs> or one of them box calls, yeah. you know, and. Hell, we go down there, and they said, "Boy, I don't know. It's, it's a lot easier. It's a lot harder than you think." We get down there, back of my house, because it falls off, and that's where they come up. <coughs> Boy, I barely. <laughs> and I scratch it some bitch a little bit, and then, uh, boy, it ain't goddamn five seconds. And here come five gobblers this way, but I didn't see one that was coming over towards that way towards the shrub. But these five, they get right there on top of, of course, then they, yeah. you know, throwing them, leaving them. I don't know shit about no <laughs> damn turkey, but I know they're 10, 15 yards, and I can't figure out why the shrub ain't, ain't shooting, shooting them. Well, there was one. He ain't even seen the dumb son of bitches oh, in front no. of him because I guess this one come in first, and he was hanging it. up, and he shot that some gun at like all oh, 40, 50 yards. And wounded him, and he takes off, and he has to go run. And he tackles him, <laughs> finally shrub. beats him to death. Right here, yeah, <laughs> it's right, right here, shrub. Shoot these! Don't yeah, shoot that long. That's exactly out what there. it was. And he finally gets him killed. He unloaded his shotgun, beat his feet to death because he had to take him down, beat him with this. <laughs> I said, "Why the fuck do you shoot them other ones? What turkey? I thought the ones that was like ten yards in front of. Have I never seen them? This one come in first, <laughs> and I." Was, Kind of get a little peripheral there, son. <laughs> yeah, get a little going. <laughs> I didn't full. realize you and Shrub hung out so much. Oh, fuck yeah. Yeah. When he lived in town, I mean, shit, we, we coyote hunted every goddamn night. I mean, we he'd be he get bored and I don't sleep and he don't sleep. Does his wife love you? Oh yeah. 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 How much get, sleep? Get last question, because uh we'll oh. get out of here. Um, how much sleep do you think you were getting like during the summertime when you were having to go? I all averaged the time? about two, three hours and a day. That's it. I bet you were a grouchy fucker sometimes. Dude, I bet you, Kelly Jean I, I, was like, "Ask my wife." No, she never seen me. I was gone all the time. I, I, I say, my, I bet I, the guys that worked around you was like, "I didn't want to get some sleep." Yeah, I, well, that's me typically. I don't. I'm about a three hour. If I sleep more than three hours in a night, I don't like it. 
Really? And, but I had gotten where I would <clears throat> sleep, you know, get me a nap during the day, and I would get me a 30-minute nap a day and three hours a night, and that's, hell, I still don't last. I slept more last night than I have in a long time because I got run over by a cow yesterday. And I mean, she mucked my ass out and took all the air. And I was a little sore, but but usually I don't. But So what time wife, do you go to bed? You go to bed at 10.30, 11 no, o'clock? No, 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 no. I go to bed like early. When the sun goes down, I'm going down with it. And then I'll sleep about three hours and I get up and that all depends. Uh, but like last night, I went to bed at like 6.30. Mm-hmm. And uh, I got up at like, <laughs> it was funny, I got up at, 11 and then i stayed up for a little while my wife was still up and then went back to sleep i got up at two and i come back in there and she's fucking still tick tocking and, <laughs> and she don't like to do that because she likes her sleep and i said hey, get your ass get, give me that you need to go to bed you're gonna get up i said you're cranky as it is you're a really bitch when you ain't got no sleep and she, it was right because i come in there at four and uh Tried to rub up against her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, See what happens when you don't get she your sleep? To, she went to sleep. Yeah, she went but, to sleep. You could got some 4 No, I don't. I, I didn't, that's what a buddy of mine always told me. He said, you should have been a uh, milker. You should have been born in <laughs> Winthorpe. So he said, you'd have made the perfect milker. And, uh, but Fuck, no. I'd be so... If I couldn't go back to sleep and it's 1130, it ain't even the fucking next day. And, I've already, and I'm already awake. But what? you know, that's another... That is a sacrifice. My wife did not hardly see me at all last year. Because, you know, Imagine. I, I was gone and she works. And when mm-hmm. she got to work, I was he- I was headed out to go again. And like I say, and it was every fucking day. Well, you did it. It's you, over you with. What's, what's your next uh, what's your next adventure? You got anything that you're thinking of in the future? I'm ready for a road trip. That's, it's going to be hard to top a coyote today. No, no, no. We're over that for a little bit. I, I would. I was kind of just. I mean, you'll find something else to do. I want to do that. You'll tri- find another triathlon challenge. deal and uh, just do it somewhere else. Well, that may be what I do. And of course, I I'm, I appreciate the break. I'm glad I didn't have to start running and jogging and doing all that because right. I needed the fucking break. And I, right now, I'm fixing to start branded calves and tested bulls and all that. Road but, trip to Alaska. Well, that's what that's what I'm thinking. A road trip. I'd love to go to Alaska. I'd like to go to that guy's island. Yeah. Well, and, yeah, and I got a friend at Anchorage. I got got some friend. Had that one one uh, friend, Casey and Austin Hearn. They drove. Uh, I think it's Casey who stationed at Anchorage, somewhere up there in Alaska. They drove from Georgia. Him and his brother drove all the way up or the the route that we're talking about. That would be a fun through, ride. No, yeah, he said it, and it took him like five days up there. But yeah, he said it was pretty. Be a pretty cool trip. Well, Clay, you're a badass. Congratulations on your coyote today. Um, if anybody else has ever done it, I've never heard about it. So you're <coughs> we'll the be, only one. You're we'll a legend. Be, we'll be seeing you on film here in about another six weeks or so. <coughs> Even better. All right. Thank you. God all bless right. you for being here, bud. Appreciate it. Thank you all for listening to us. Peace out. Done. Now we're bumping three hours. Good. All right. Go check out our sponsors. Go check out... The Hunt Proof app, Alpha Outdoor Specialties, Bangtail Whiskey, Sanfield Hunting Outfitters, Dirty Duck Coffee, Ducks Unlimited, Double T British Kennels, Looking Glass Podcast, Lucky Duck, Shin Gear, Gun Dog Outdoors, Pacific Calls, Dive Bomb Industries, Boss Shot Shells, and Mossberg.